Hey everyone, you're listening to the official podcast of 4PlayerNetwork.com. Check us out at that address for everything you need to know about our community, monthly giveaways, and nightly live streams. You can even support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash 4player. And last but not least, you can catch the live recordings of these podcasts every single Thursday night on our Twitch channel. We hope to see you there. Enjoy. podcast this is episode 613 it is september 5th 2019 my name is nick henderson and i am joined this evening by the wonderful illustrious brad simons yo fuck you fuck you that was very weak uh nolan headstrom how come i'm not wonderful or illustrious i don't know i ran out of descriptive words to (laughs) adjectives that's what they're called Thank you for once again highlighting my lack of vocabulary tonight. Christopher Davis is also here. Hello, Chris. Hello, hello. And uh, <laughs> now I feel really stupid for not calling them adjectives. Thank you. Well, don't call me an adjective. <laughs> You're an adjective, <laughs> bitch. Damn. Oh, my God. I don't need to be agitated. How is everybody doing tonight? Everyone's pretty good. Break. Everyone's so quiet. Yeah, it's one of those things where I think it's just, it's it's, you know, week's almost over been a rough week been such a long week yeah it's not like i didn't have monday off so i mean was that this week yes that yes. was this week it, it, feels, feels, it still feels like it was a year ago it I, does not feel like it i sure. think we've just been talking for 45 minutes and honestly we're tired of talking nick to each other all right well it's time to talk for another two hours at least woo! so woo, did you, let's did y'all, do did it did y'all see the thing i retweeted <laughs> y'all's podcast was long last week it i always was. feel good when it's long and i'm not on that's what she said sometimes <laughs> i get blamed for it being long um you, you you all know we talked about hard drive before the twitter account yeah post yeah. funny stuff yeah. there uh the one they tweeted i retweeted earlier was gaming gaming comedy podcast now two solid hours of incomprehensible inside jokes yeah that's <laughs> us and that's, i was like yeah i feel like, like we're us. not a lot of inside jokes you know some are real bad yeah like chris thacker <laughs> yeah and, like every time we oh, laugh God. and talk about chris thacker like uh, anybody knew is like what the are they talk? Oh and they God. Google Chris Thacker, and they're like, "Who the fuck is Chris Thacker?" You literally can just go to his house. <laughs> <laughs> We've been recording for less than two minutes, and I knew that was we're already talking tonight. about him. I knew that was going to come up tonight. He doxed himself. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but you know, I feel like this is a good opportunity to welcome our new patrons because, as I've mentioned the past couple weeks, we have uh, we're we're working towards our next goal on patreon of getting 150 patrons when we hit that goal we're gonna do our next project m event we haven't done one in a couple years or a few years i guess uh and we're looking forward to doing another one it's gonna be a fun exciting big day-long event but we want to hit 150 patrons before we get to that get to that point we only need are you ready for this Whoa. We only need we only need twelve more patrons. Twelve? Twelve. We're at one hundred and thirty eight. We need to hit hit one hundred and fifty. And it doesn't matter if that's a one dollar pledge or a three dollar pledge or whatever. They all count towards the same number. So uh, I want to welcome our new patrons this yeah, week. We got we have, one every day the past three days. Yep. Wow. Uh, so I want to welcome uh, Mr. Scorpion, mm-hmm. who is also in chat tonight. Welcome, Mr. Scorpion. Mm-hmm. Also, uh, the drunken merchant. Is a new is a new uh, new patron. I think he may have asked this question this week. I'm not entirely sure. And Thorax mm-hmm. is also an officially a a a uh, pledge welcome on Patreon. Welcome to the club, guys. Yes, thank you. To the wonderful club. We really appreciate all the support. Um, we're working towards that goal. Also, we're getting real serious about starting. We talked about this before the show briefly. Uh, we also want to get some new headphones to kind of help us keep control of the audio together. So I want to go ahead and put this shout out out there. If anybody out there is like a like an audiophile and knows a lot about like headphones and equipment and that kind of stuff. We'd love suggestions as to what might be a, something good to consider for really, us. Really, maybe an expert on our mixer. Yeah, I'll, I'll I will share details about our mixer and our current set of equipment if anybody reaches out to me in like Discord. Our mixer came with a large manual, and I don't know what any of it means. It probably ended up in the trash. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. No, it did. I'm fairly certain it's in the closet. We it. figured yeah. out we figured it's, out it's, how to plug it, this thing in and yeah. get audio out of it, and that's all that matters. Let us know how it was our basically audio chips sounds. and typewriters. Uh, but anyways, if anybody reaches out to me and they want to help yeah. us pick out some equipment, I will be happy to share with you the information about our current mixer and setup and everything. But if you want to reach out to us, a good place to do that is discord.gg slash four player. Could Chai Tai and Chat makes a good point. Like, could he rig the system like that to where he don't go- even think about it? Chai Tai. He that would not count. 
I don't even know why you would consider making multiple accounts on Patreon. It's not like we're... Maybe he appreciates us. It's not like we're... Maybe he does, but it's not like we're, like, desperate. Chris Davis, been... if you don't get that microphone out of your mouth, I'm going to mute you. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, dude, you, like, it's, like, fucking two inches <clears throat> from your mouth. Can I get to feedback, please? Okay. All right. Let's... The chatters are currently hearing way too much feedback, Nick. Oh. I, I see what you did there. Uh, anyways, before we get started, we do have we have some games we're going to talk about tonight. Obviously, we're going to talk about Blair Witch. We're going to talk about Control. We're going to talk about Final Fantasy VIII Remastered. All that good stuff. Um, and I want another game with a surprise ending. We'll get to it. All right, and Man of Medan. Black Betty. <laughs> did you? Oh, get, inside joke. Did you get to that part? From last week, Brad, you weren't here last week. Did you hear? Did you hear our discussion of Man of Medan last yeah, week? Yeah, Black Betty. Or <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm pretty proud of that one. That was pretty good. Uh, so we'll talk about Man that in a bit. Um, I also want to mention if you're watching us live, uh, Brad's going to hang around a little bit after the show, and him and I are going to have a discussion about Devil May Cry Three for our Revival Club. It's going to be a short, like 20, 25 minute discussion uh, as kind of a cap off to our Revival Club episodes. And I, as a on a related note. I would like to say that we've uh, we've officially picked our winner for our third episode of the Revival Club. Y'all, the people have spoken, and they picked. And they fear. were wrong again. <laughs> what? They were so wrong. You both think they were, they were hey, wrong. Hey Nick, what does fear stand for? Uh oh, God. Chris Davis. Extraction first. First extraction. No encounter. First encounter assault. Recon team. What? Well, recon. recon. Close. Yeah, recon. yeah. Yeah. First Encounter Assault Recon. And Recon. Oh, and Recon. Shit, I knew that. It's Fear. Yes, but they picked Fear, yeah, yeah. so we're going to be playing that throughout the month of September or October. Um, it's a shorter game, so you no, no huge rush. I'm probably going to stream it starting sometime next week, but if you're interested in playing along and being a part of discussions, you can support us on Patreon or, go to, or on Twitch, and you'll have access to the uh, Revival Club Discord channels where you can talk to all the folks about it so uh, again hang out after the show brad and i will talk about some devil may cry 3 because i know we are a little behind on getting the podcast off the ground but we're still trying to kind of feel that out and figure out how it's going to work um but without further ado let's get to feedback from last week so we can start talking about some video games um our first comment this week comes from grab a beer grab a beer says uh, I have to comment on the performance issue you guys brought up about Control. I'm, curr- I'm currently playing it on the base PS4. Ooh. Uh, at its core, I love this game. It reminds me of Evil Within 2 or Shadows of the Damned, uh, both of which are a part of my top 10 games of all time. But there's one thing that makes playing the game insufferable. Uh, the frame bad rate controls? No, it actually no. it's great controls. Uh, the frame rate drops are unacceptable. I can't believe they shipped the game in its current state. I honestly don't care if a game is at 60 or 30 frames per second, but when there's 10,000 particle effects flying around your character at 5 frames per second, and then you die because you don't know what's going on and have to sit through a two-minute long loading screen, I lose all interest in playing it. Ouch. The loading's pretty bad, too. It is. Even on PC, like loading is like... You don't load often, but when you fast travel or there's the occasional like elevator you go on or whatever, it's like a 30-second... Mm-hmm. Hmm. Wait, at least. Are you playing off on hard drive or an SSD? Yeah. Out of curiosity. Hard drive? Should probably get on that SSD. Probably. Like yeah. Well, yeah. But I imagine if it's long on even on PC hard drive, it's probably pretty bad on a PS4. Oh, yeah. Totally. Yes. Um, he goes on to say, it really does hurt, though, because I've been looking forward to this game since its reveal at E3. Uh, and I love Remedy and want to support them the best I can. But how can I when I when I can't even play the game they shipped? I really hope they follow through with their statement to improve the game's performance. Is this Carlos? No. It's I, too I elegantly not. worded to be Carlos. <laughs> there's no memes in this comment. Of course there's it's no not memes, Carlos. There's prepositions. And... Uh, there we go. All of the above. Um, you know, they're probably going to go through with patching that game for I'm performance sure issues, will. but I still don't think it's probably going to have a, a big effect on the base consoles. Yeah, but just remember, not everything... I mean, they can't just, like, magically wave their hands and create a patch that fixes the performance issues. If they could, it probably wouldn't be that this fucking bad in the first place. Maybe they just forgot to test it on a PS4. I mean, here's, uh, like, even... Probably more truth to that than... On the PS4 Pro, believe. on the PS4 Pro, like, it's <laughs> it's being widely reported that, it, you know, while it's it, it has those stuttering moments, it's not, like, 
it doesn't ruin the experience or, mm. or anything like that. It's just kind of annoying every once in a while. But the the P, the base PS4 console is just kind of fucked. And I'm after ha- having played it on PC, every time it's like something explodes, I'm like, oh shit! Like how how would that even be handled <laughs> on a base PS4? It's it's kind of insane. Unless they like dialed back some of the particle effects or something. Yeah, Maybe that would no, be that's definitely something. But that would do, be like yeah. taking a hit. Like that's a major like selling point of the game. I don't know. Nick, you know all of the when you when you're on a PC and you go into like the settings and they have all those graphical settings. Mm-hmm. They just pretty much lower it all, and that's what the PS4 is running, yeah. basically. They just turn all that shit down, and you just can't turn it up. That's basically how it works. Yeah, that sounds awful. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Scorpion this week says, I gotta say, Control sounds like an awesome experience and something I should check out, uh, that I should check more into personally. i never really seen any trailers or gameplay before hearing about it here, but uh, even so, I'm loving the premise and setting that, that was discussed. Also, Telling Lies sounded intriguing as well. Play any more of that, Nolan? Yes, I played a bunch of it. Did you finish? Oh, why don't you talk about that? It's hard to talk about because we talked about it last week. Yeah. yeah, I know. You just also said... I installed a mod. Let's me skip to the beginning of a video. <sighs> Let me know what that mod's called. Uh, anyways, he says telling why it sounds in- intriguing as well. I've always wanted to check out her story and playing that game with the uh, with the misses sounds like it could uh, be well worth it. Lastly, Nolan's jokes were on point this episode. Keep up the solid puns. I got you, fam. <laughs> thank you uh mr scorpion and our last comment comes from slop dog uh good old slop dog says no one was on fire this episode my god damn y'all are just encouraging him uh cranking out those crunchy jests crunchy jests i don't know about that phrase <laughs> crunchy. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know how i feel about that those i mean i crunch- get it like a jest and i guess crunchy but still like of- combined Crunchy Whoa, Jess. And, you know, it only gets worse when you try to replace that word, like Juicy Jess. Like, no. That, that sounds like a, that actually sounds like a good episode title, The Crunchy Jess Show. Uh, oh no, I, my phone went to sleep. Come back. Uh, enjoy y'all's thoughts on game difficulties and the overall futility, and uh, with dedicating yourself to the hardest difficulty, and some great answers for that baby question. Great work. Love it. What was the baby I, question? Something about curb stomping a baby. Oh, Jesus. I forgot <laughs> yeah, about that one. Forgot about that. I tried to block that from my mind. Curb stomping a me earlier today. Well, that's fine. Yeah, those are like fake. You know, let's just stop talking about babies. Yep. All right. Uh, again, thank you guys so much for your feedback. If there's anything you want to contribute to tonight's discussions, of course, you can uh, go to fourplayernetwork.com, leave a comment uh, on the post for this episode, and we will read it. Hey, and Nick, respond to it next week. This is really off topic, but remember that chatter named Ponin O'Brien? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Such a good name. That was a really good name. Like, oh, that's one of those that. names where you read it and you instantly feel like, man, why did I think of that? That's so good. <laughs> ah, anyways, we miss you, Ponin O'Brien. Um, all right, let's talk about video games. Um, I So... This is basically I, the Nick show. This is like the Nick show. Like I played most I'm of the gonna stuff. I'm going to talk about I know. Games. So why don't we... Start with you, no one. Why don't we start with you, and then we'll go to me, and then we'll I got go to something. You, and then we'll go to, let's if you if you have three games to talk about, let's not save all of you till the end, Nick. All right, y'all just gotta promise me. You gotta promise me, guys. You're gonna talk to me about these. Are I can't, you gonna I talk can't more just, about? I'll definitely listen. Do you want me to talk more about Control? Not really. Fi- I'm still a little sad that I have not played it yet. I finished Control. I haven't touched it yet. Ask me anything. You know what you did to Control? Made it my bitch. You Metro Exodus did uh, when I asked you about it. What? You were like, it's pretty good. Yeah. No, because the way you asked me about it was, uh, is it better? What did, what did you say? You basically asked me by saying, is it better than Days Gone? Yeah, I did. That's not a way to ask me how I feel about Control. Uh, Why not? <laughs> is it better I mean, or worse yeah. than Days Gone? And your you were opinion. pretty excited about Control. It's not. I did not. I, I believe. I. If you want me to answer that question. Answer. I believe I believe Days Gone was a better video game there you go. than Control. And, like, but probably like you you could probably think of ten better video games better. Than maybe Control. like I'm. That I, came out this year. I said I said Control is great. Dude, she's flying. Is, is this gonna be spoilery? No, I mean it's all based on. I am I mean, still pretty she flew excited. Flew in the fucking game. trailers for this. I game, know. Right? Yeah. I know. This but... is post game yeah, this... stuff, but I, I stay okay. in the same room. She can put her hair up. Time. I mean, there's multiple costumes. There's multiple costumes you can get. Costumes. Yes, there's there are co- not a ton of them, but there's, think of the mods, a- Brad. Does she got a Dana Scully? Hairstyle? She did give me. She's giving me a Dana Scully vibe. She kind of yeah. looks yeah. like Dana Scully in this uh, in this costume, but in this you know footage, 
I the try hair keep, matches the costume. I try to keep it. Yeah, you don't change the hair and the costume. <laughs> the hair matches the um, costume. I just want to say, like, you asked me about this in terms of like how I would rank in my top ten. I think this is a phenomenal game. I love Alan Wake. I love Remedy. What does Alan Wake have to do with anything? But easy. Jeez, <laughs> killer. <laughs> um. I'm just saying, like, I love the studio, I love their games, I love Alan Wake, which is the, you know, and I love Quantum Break, but, like, Oops. Quantum Break even made my top ten, and this is a fan, this is a phenomenal game. You know I don't what know made your th- top ten, Nick? This is Detroit. not guaranteed. This is not guaranteed hey, to make it, it my top ten. <laughs> it did. Detroit's better than Quantum Break, at least. Is it, Nick? Answer. It's important. Wait. Quant- Detroit or Quantum Break? What's the better video game? Those are two very different experiences. <laughs> Actually, these are the important questions, Nick. One is an no action. one cares about control. One is an action game. <laughs> the other one is not an action game. Like, at all. It's a narrative. You There's know. action. Do you want to ask me anything else about control? I talked uh, about it last week. I, I don't want to... Dude, it looks dope. I mean, I wasn't here last week, and I do want to play this game, but I got a PS4, and I can't afford the PC version. All right, right. I will say this about control having... Sp- I, 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 it took me about 25 hours to finish it. I am... Uh, and I've had a lot more time with it since I first played it last week, and some of the things that bug me about this game are things like... Fly up there. Can you fly up there? Wait, what? Can you fly up to those like rafters? Yeah, I'm about to. Cool. There is a limit to like how far you can fly, so you can kind of like one thing I'll say, but like the flying is it like a uh, jetpack juice or some shit? Kind of, but it's not juice or jetpack. <laughs> it's like it's how, how far into the game percentage wise do you get the flying? Uh, oh god, I don't know, like sixty percent through or something. Okay, I, that's just a it's better than wild like guess. Eighty percent no, or whatever. Yeah, I mean. You get you, you, have, you time have plenty to, of time with most with? of the abilities in this game, okay. and there are some phenomenal like there's some phenomenal storytelling here, some phenomenal world building. Uh, the things that bug me about this game though are things like the boss fights are um, annoying. They're really annoying because they're this game is surprisingly difficult, and it's almost always thanks to bosses. Hmm, uh, hmm. Like, I ran into several walls in this game where I was fighting the same boss over and over and over and hmm. over again. Because you, you take damage... You, you take a lot of damage from bosses. And you, you get to, you have those situations where you, like... You're, like, trying to move around and, like, dodge all these abilities. And then in the midst of doing that, you run out of, quote-unquote, juice. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. you can't, like, dash or float, fly or anything. Hit. So you're just trying to, like, run, but you can't move fast enough. So you're just getting mm. fucking pounded with stuff. So that stuff's that stuff's really annoying, uh, and a lot of times that there's not a since you're restarting bosses over and over again, the checkpointing is not phenomenal. I mean, you have to, it's like you load back to your most recent control point, and sometimes you have to go through like waves of enemies before you get back to a boss. That Shit like that's sucks. really annoying. Um, but the combat in this game is great. So you're in post game in this footage right now. Yes, Remedy has never put out a game that has content in the base game past the the ending you're right like most so what their, is the, most what is of their the games game? most of their games just kind of end and then it's like play you know start a new game this is obviously this is more i think more I open because it's, it's an open world where you can do yeah it's shit. open it's open world ish you're you're constantly right. back you know going back and forth between different it, areas it's been of, described of as metroidvania a little yeah and and I and I said this last week, and I, th- I think it still applies now that I've finished it. Like a lot of the stuff that there's only a few scenarios in which like, places that you want to access are hidden behind like things you have to use abilities to get to. Mm-hmm. I'd say like ninety percent of the things are hidden behind clearance card doors. What's the point of you shooting that? Uh, this is just this side mission, the mission to destroy to these green moles things. things. Yeah, um, there's one underneath you. I know. Thank you. I spent a lot of time. I, I forgot what they looked like, and it doesn't well, like they look green. It. I know, but like a lot, a lot of shit in this room looks green. <laughs> look just, up, Nick. I, y'all are killing me. It's I, right above you, <laughs> slightly Come to the on, right. Man. Oh, you're running away from it. This Nick. Nick. This right here is like a prime example of why it was a terrible idea for ever, for us to ever roll footage <laughs> while yeah, we're talking about games. Our show got so much worse. Yeah. Uh, did it? But more fun for us true and but that's if you think the- about it if we don't love what we're doing then why do it true um but you know there is definitely a post game here you know a lot of it's just kind of cleaning up missions and finding last minute pieces of lore what like i love the lore in this game we talked a lot about it being um kind of like what are they called the sc is it scp 
what is it? SCP? SCP Foundation? SCP Foundation. A lot of that stuff, obviously, but the one gripe I have about it is, like, so much of it is hidden, by, is is told to you through just, like, notes. There's, like, so much reading. There's so much reading in this game. Oh. I know. The, the, the only thing I was, the only, like, upside to that, I would say, Brad, because I know you're not the biggest fan of, like, reading files and notes and yeah. stuff. It makes sense in this game because, like, you're reading redacted government files. Like all the all the notes are like you'll be reading something and then like something important will come up and it's it's redacted and it's like it feels part of the world but as a result it's just like so much of the stuff is just like dumped in your lap via notes so that's kind of a disappointment there are some you know audio and video files you find and stuff but can I just a lot like of it's have access to your Epic Store account how does that work anyways I, I don't know I <laughs> I've played like four games on my Epic Store account but like I still don't even totally know how it works oh like but there's this game does some cool shit where it doesn't... There's tricks you can use that it doesn't expressly tell you. You just kind of discover, like, this gun that I'm using called the Charge Shot. Like, you, char you charge up these, like, three, like, like metal hot rods and then, like, yeah. fire them. And then they fire. But, like, when you if you fire it and then immediately use your, like, uh, what like your force pull or whatever, you can grab it out of the air and then, like, aim it and then, like, grab that fling it in a different direction. Like, it doesn't tell you you can do that, but you can combine abilities and, like... Like when you're flying, you can cool. still use your sh the shield where you pull the rocks up and like hold it up, or you know, nothing. Using one ability doesn't negate you using any other abilities, and that shit's really cool. But um, so does the post game like does it at all like sequel monger or does it like it? I mean, it. Wait, what was that phrase you just used? Sequel, sequel monger. Sequel monger. The fuck does that mean? I think he means is this is it is it doing it so you can it's setting up a sequel? Yeah, like like Halo Two sequel mongers like terribly. You can't use a phrase to describe a phrase. <laughs> this is true. Okay, so... I get what you're saying. It's, a game it, abruptly ends and basically says, you want to get the complete experience, play, play by the, the next game. game? Okay, yes. gotcha. Um, I, so, I'll say, I'll say this. Like I read several reviews before I even played this game, and people, a lot of people were talking about how the game just kind of abruptly ends. And I know some people in our community felt the same way. After I got to the end of this game... I was genuinely concerned that people like saw credits start to roll and then turned it off mm. because there's a bunch of stuff that happens after that moment that I feel like kind of negates doesn't negate but like it will it alleviates some of the the concerns about it being an abrupt ending. I, yeah. I, I wouldn't call it abrupt. Like to me, an abrupt ending is like uh, oh god, Jericho. It? Jericho is an abrupt ending. That is an abrupt ending. Or there is definitely the, the a lot original of sequel sequel monger Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver. Where you get to the end and Kane just jumps through a portal. It's like, give me in the sequel, bitch! <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, yeah. That Dark, doesn't, that doesn't quite happen. One. But there is definitely some, you know, they've set up a universe. Like, the thing is, like, when, as far as, unless I'm forgetting something, Remedy has never made a sequel with the exception of Max Payne 2. Everything yeah, else true. has been new IP. So, well, they could, they like Alan Wake, they could very they could very easily about, make a sequel to this. What about the but American I don't think it, Nightmare? I wouldn't really call that a sequel per se. Maybe it's kind of. I mean, that was that was a that follow is a weird... up game, which they were heavily hinting would be you know the lead into Alan Wake Two. So yeah, but who, like who knows if we're ever gonna get Alan Wake Two? And I, like, I don't know if we're ever gonna get Control. Honestly, I'm perfectly happy if Remedy just decides to like keep making new IP after new IP because this game stands alone on its own just fine. But it def definitely leaves some unanswered questions, some stuff that you can see them wanting to answer later, but. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. That's what that. else you've been playing, Nick? Oh, we're just gonna do this. Yeah, we're just roll on. Yeah. Um, all right. Then why don't we talk about Blair Witch? Blair no, let me Witch. talk about my game. Pro no, f fuck you, Nolan. No, fuck you, Nick. Blair Witch. Blair bitch. I played this game. Beat it over the weekend. Uh, I played it in two sittings. Um, this is the next game from Bloober Team. So if you played Layers of Fear Blooper Team and Observer. I, for, I, I forgot they did Observer. So uh, both those games, pretty cool. They do some trippy, yeah, yeah, do some yeah. trippy things here. Um, but so, but I'll be honest, I didn't go into this with a lot of high expectations necessarily. One second. Wait, what are we doing? Are you trying to I'm roll? I'm asking footage? him to change the name to the name of the game we're talking oh. about. Oh. I did. No, you didn't. It said Control. It said control. Oh well, just roll the footage. Oh, well, Ooh, okay, it's no, dark. Start the podcast. Dark. Okay, so um, yeah, the footage is probably gonna. This looks maybe a little bit darker than what it was when I was playing it. I will say this: I went to go, I went to go back and record footage, and there was a massive update, and they had, I guess, added HDR support, 
after I had finished playing it. So when I booted it up, it was extremely dark. Like, darker than what you're seeing on the screen right now. <laughs> I'm not certain I want to play this game with HDR. Uh, no, actually, I would. Pr- it, it might not be so bad if you're playing in, like, a pitch black room. But I had lights on and I couldn't see shit. Um, I kind of want to turn the gamma all the way up. Okay, so... Let me just say this. I didn't have super high expectations going into this. Bloober is a fine team, but their games are kind of budget, I guess. And they seem... I I always thought this was going to be very like a very on-rails experience. And in a way, it is. But this is this game really, really surprised me. Like, the if you're familiar at all with... with yeah, I'm assuming y'all have all seen Blair Witch. Yes. Nope. No, you've Whoa, never seen the original Blair Witch. No. I've not seen it either. Blair Witch Night. I only watch good movies. Oh my god! You no, can't watch Blair great. Witch. Holy shit! Oh wow. Okay. Um. So specifically, I was... we're not talking about the new Blair. No, Witch I'm talking film. about. I'm talking about the original. I'm talking about the yeah, original. Okay. Although I do want to watch that new one just because. I watched the new one. Is it all right? Is it? Is it? Can you say it's okay? It's okay. Okay. Cool. I mean, it's a very different it. type of movie, but it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, you know, there's been three movies and they're all pretty different. Um, so, so how is your primary weapon here? Your your Nokia brick. Uh, okay, so I'll get there. I'll get there. Um, what this game sets. So this game is kind of it's set like two or three years after the movie, and um, you play this guy who's joining a search party who's going into the woods to try and find this missing kid. Two or three years. Oh, a new missing kid. <laughs> yes, a new missing kid. Gotcha. But they, like, he's a little late. But they do reference the the kids that went into the woods. Okay. And when I say missing kid, like they're going in to find like a like an eight year old kid gotcha. that disappeared, and they think he went into the woods. So you're showing up and you're joining the search party, and uh, you you venture into the woods. You have your trusty dog Bullet with you to help you on the search. Um, and shortly after you get into the woods. Shit starts to get weird, and suddenly you're terribly lost, and creepy shit starts happening. What I wasn't expecting, I thought it was going to be a very like kind of on rails game where there's not a lot of room for exploration, and the world was, gonna, was going to. I thought it was going to be weird because it takes place in a forest, and it was gonna, yet somehow it was going to feel like super guided. This game is actually way more open than I was expecting, um, and it does an amazing job. Of making you feel super paranoid and super lost, like disoriented lost, which is very intentional, um, because you know a lot of the fear in that first movie was oh, built look, around last. was I mean, you can use your your camcorder I to like use night vision, but I used it very very rarely. I relied on my flashlight more more often than not. Um, but it's actually they've created a really like convincing forest and i would be i wouldn't be surprised if you were to like look at the map the map actually not being very big but when you're in it it feels massive and it feels super disorienting and like and they'll do shit oh my god they do some such like you'll be walking through the woods your with your flashlight and you'll see like a tree or something in front of you and then like your flashlight will like dim for like a half a split second and when it comes back up you're in a totally different place the tree that you were standing oh, yeah. in front of is just gone and you're huh. like where the fuck am i and like the in the entire time you're hearing noises and you'll you'll see things just kind of like out of your peripheral vision and yeah like you keep finding this dog <laughs> dude the dog <laughs> freaked me out a few times um there's very very little emphasis on like combat encounters but there are scenarios where these weird like apparitions pre- apparitions will kind of like stalk you mm-hmm. and the dog is there to like he'll growl and he'll like look in the direction they are and if you watch the dog you can know which direction to like point your flashlight because they don't like light so as soon as you shine your flashlight in the direction that they're coming from they'll kind of like dissipate and and leave Hmm. um so it's like alan wake yeah a little bit but not quite as like ideally you should never come face to face with whatever's stalking you in the woods it's 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 still very minimalistic it feels honestly it feels pretty true to like the movie in that you Mm -hmm. very rarely actually see anything that poses a threat Mm mm-hmm but the entire time, you're, it just makes you feel on edge. And I'll just say this: you get through this, you get through this game to the very end, mm-hmm. and you, of course, you end up in the situation where you're like, you're in. I don't know if it's the same house they find in, at the end of the first movie, which mm-hmm. you don't know what I'm talking about, I guess. But no. I'm sure you've seen the famous scene with the, with the guy standing yeah, in the corner. Yeah. yeah. You end up. I think it's supposed to be that house. You end up there, and the last chapter of this game, which goes on for quite a while is one of the most trippy, fucked up, 
terrifying chapters of, of any game I've ever played. Mm-hmm. Like, it gives me flashbacks to when I was playing the original Condemned when you go into the basement of the house. Like, that was, up until this point, that was kind of like my high mark for, like, terrifying, creepy shit. It sounds mm-hmm. like this is maybe more like that re- or that movie that came out in 2016. Yeah, probably. I mean, there's... Which had this moment where you go into the house at the end and there's a thing there. And... Yeah, I mean, the first movie is very unique in that it is a found footage film and they never really... They never... The entire film is like that. There's no... There's nothing that's supposed to, like, break the immersion or, or, or remind you that you're watching a movie. Mm-hmm. Everything after that, obviously, has been more of a traditional movie-going experience and this is kind, that's kind of the feeling that this is going for. Um, it, def- it definitely leans into more obvious supernatural elements you know i'm like the apparitions seem kind of like lame to me if i don't mean to do I, I, I will t- i will tell you meanie, this but... i will tell you this play this game with headphones on yeah. in the dark those things will make the hair on the back of your neck stand up because okay. all you can hear is like things like running through leaves and like like you know what really it freaked was me out though? It was super fucking effective. And like, if, if I was shining my flashlight around and there was like a gray, there was like an alien, little alien dude, mm-hmm. standing next behind a tree. Well, I mean... I would lose my mind. <laughs> there's nothing... I mean, that doesn't exactly happen, but you can catch very quick glimpses of them behind trees, and you, they're not like... They're very, like, blurry forms, so, like, it's kind of the same thing. Like... Mm-hmm. So it's like you're you're like hunting Bigfoot. Okay, no, I saw it right Kinda, there. Yeah, like you'll see them like running around, and but they're like they're just like sh- figures, like shapes running through the trees. Yeah. And with the audio design is pretty damn top notch, and it <clears throat> with that in conjunction with what you're seeing in front of you, like it was super effective. It was making mm-hmm. the hair in the back of my neck stand up almost consistently. Um, and they do some of that. They do a lot of that really trippy, just like, you know, uh. I don't want to say non-Euclidean geometry, but you know, just things, just things are happening around you and in the environment that sh- that shouldn't be possible. Um, but they do it in very subtle ways that make you just go, "Did, did I just see that? Did that just happen?" Mm-hmm. And they never really confirm it for you. Like that, there's a bunch of that happening in this game, and it's so good. But I'm telling you, man, that last chapter where you're trying to get through the house is so fucking scary. It freaked the shit. Like I don't think I've ever played a game that made me hyperventilate. People were watching me stream, and there's probably a clip of this. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming somebody clipped it out. I literally had uncontrollable hyperventilate. I was, I was like, <gasps> like, I was breathing like super fucking hard, and it was involuntary because this game freaked the shit out of me so bad. Why didn't you go under the creepy tunnel? Uh, for <clears throat> for the sake of this foot, like you have to use a uh, there's a padlock down there that you have to unlock, and I didn't oh. remember what the code was. What is um. Why isn't there like a secret ending where you just get back in your truck and just fucking drive away? Maybe there is. I've only played the game once. All right, dude yelling at the screen during a horror movie. <laughs> You're so It's stupid. a reasonable work. Just It's leave. a reasonable thing to think Just about. leave. Why Anyways. would you go out there? Brad, I think this is a game you should play. I think maybe just wa- you should watch that 2016 Blair Witch. I'm going to. But what is that? Wait, why are you deflecting? Are you not going to play the game, Brad? Oh, I no, I mean... This would be a, I fun, play, this would be a fun game like, to watch Brad play. I'm worried that this game might be, like, annoying, though. Like, okay, I will like, say... Like, oh, that, I'm getting lost and frustrated and, and like, oh, I'm out of fucking all right, batteries is, for my you don't flashlight. Run out of, you don't run out of batteries. Okay. There are no batteries to worry about. I will say this. Uh, I could see you getting frustrated because the you spend 70 to 80% of this game lost in the woods. And that is I, I that is part of it. That is part of its affected. design. It's part of its design, and you're supposed to feel really disoriented. Like like when your flashlight barely illuminates like the space in front of you. Yeah. So like you are. But it's one thing seeing that happen to someone like in a movie, and then like on the other hand, playing it. You know, I, I know. I mean, know. It, it may not be for everyone. It may it may turn you off. Uh, I'm just saying, I've never really played a game where the the draw or the the point of it was to prey on your fear of being lost Mm -hmm. because honestly like being lost in the woods at night is like that sounds like one of the scariest fucking scenarios you could ever possibly like even if you don't believe in like ghosts or witches or any of this shit like just finding yourself alone in the middle of the woods and not knowing where you are at night that's terrifying it scares the shit out of me and this this game very effectively preys on that fear so it's definitely something i recommend it's not something that i i expected to like nearly as much as i did but 
I can kind of see this being maybe what I would consider maybe my, the first like underdog of the year for me. Like mm. one of those games that's probably not going to mm. get a lot of talk, but something that I think is worth your time mm. if you're if you're a fan of the genre. So mm-hmm. I would mm. I would check it out. Sure, okay. that's some cool shit. All right, that's enough about for me. I'll come back. I have one more game to talk about, but let's let's switch gears for a second. Nolan, what's up, Nick? You've been playing one of the best Final Fantasies ever made. Is that what you want me to talk about? Final yeah. Fantasy? VIII? I'm curious. Yeah. Sure. How much have you played so far? Um, the remaster, I mean. I don't know, time-wise. I'm up to uh, the part. Uh, I've done one sequence with Laguna. Uh, and I'm... At, with like, the, how's that battle theme? That's good. Laguna's battle theme's tight. It is. It is. All the, the whole, music that in That whole eight soundtrack is, is amazing. Um... And You're now I'm 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 in uh, like timber or whatever. I'm with the, the like the the, tim- res- the timber owls. Or? Yeah, the owls. Yeah. Um, and we're on the the train. Just met uh, Renoa. Gonna do that whole train sequence thing. You got to do. Cool, cool. Do they have any cheats for drawing out magic? Um, no cheats for drawing out magic. They do have a lot of cheats. Um, they have cheats that can give you 100 of every magic. Uh, yeah. they have they have a bunch of those cheats. But yeah. when you do those, it disables like achievements. Like it's kind of like it okay. kind of like locks you out of any kind of achievement or anything. Yeah. Uh, but similar to the other ones that that they've released like this, what they do have is the ability to instantly turn on and off battles. Mm-hmm. Um, three x speed, so everything runs faster. Unfortunately, the way it works with these old games is it literally just triples the frame rate. Yeah. yeah. That's all. It I'm does. guessing it works just like what they did with the Final Fantasy IX remaster. Yeah. Um, and then the other one is in battle it uh, it gives you essentially like infinite health to an extent like anytime hmm. you take damage it just reheals you and then infinite limit breaks okay uh, those are like the kind of like three main things and then like i said there infinite are a bunch of limit cheats. breaks yeah there are a bunch of cheats that you can enable but i didn't haven't enabled any of those because like i said if you do um it locks out all the achievements and i'm like oh i'll get some achievements from yeah. steam um but yeah and so i mean it's it's final fantasy there's a bunch of shit i forgot about i forgot that like uh um a bunch of the crap you do early on affects your seed ranking, oh, uh, which affects the, how much money you get. And so I forgot, like, oh, you have to do this, and you have to beat... Like, you actually don't want to beat Ifrit too fast. You actually want to beat him right before time expires and do this. And then when you're hmm. on, like, your first mission... When you're on your first mission to um, wherever Dolet. that island is, huh? Dolet. I don't remember. Dolet. The, with the, with Cypher, when he's, like, re- like running your team or whatever, and you you get selfie on your team... Isn't that uh, where you also get si- the siren summon? Yeah. Oh, yes. You draw siren out of uh, yes. a L L whatever that enemy yeah. is. Um, but yeah, like when you're on that one, like oh, you actually want to defeat like 75 enemies is the only way to get the best like rank, all that shit. And I I'm forgot realizing about all that, that when I was younger and I played this, two things. Uh-huh. One, I realized I was young and dumb, and I think I I don't think I realized I didn't think I called it seed. Mm-hmm. I think I, it, I, think I <laughs> young, called young, dumb, and full of seed. I think I. <laughs> God damn it! I think man. I called it CD for some CD. reason, because yeah. uh, it wasn't it like capital the, cap- the D is capital yeah. D. Yeah. So I was like C D, and it's cipher, not Cipher. Yeah, who said Cipher? I didn't. say It's C-fer. pronounced Cipher. No, it's not. Yeah, Fuck when they you. started talking in these fucking games, it was tedious. They don't talk in these games. No, they did eventually. He's like mm-hmm. in Kingdom Hearts. He's Cipher, and it's tedious. He's Ugh. not wrong. That's, I mean, they are wrong. Just because that doesn't mean we have to abide by those rules. Also, I have I don't think I had any idea about any of like the nuance of like getting the CD ranking. Well, so, yeah, that, seed ranking. <laughs> seed ranking. Oh my uh, God. That that's the thing. I don't think they actually tell you any of that. It's not like something that they explicitly say. Yeah. But behind the scenes there is I think it, it even says it in like the guide. Uh, like these are the ways that you do it. Oh, you have to do these things. And it's like one of those things where it's like, "Oh, you can show off your sword to these two girls in the hall, but if you do, you lose some points." All this crap. And there's a bunch of stuff like that. <clears throat> I will say that a decent amount of the time on the game so far has been from Triple Try. I knew it. Uh, I, I just, knew it. It's no. fucking because like you, you meet some of those people early on. It's like, well, this kid has the fucking Moogle card. And this guy at the back of the cafeteria has um, a fucking like Quistus card or something. It's like, I want to get all those good cards. I always remember sitting on the edge of uh, Fisherman's Horizon playing yep. the, uh, I forgot what, who it was, what character it was. But he sits there with his legs dangling yeah, over yeah. the edge there. And like, yeah, yeah. 
playing him over and over. Uh, I miss Triple Triad. But no, because the fucking thing that sucks right now is the current rule in 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 my in the area is direct, which means I only get to keep the cards that I uh, flip over during Triple Triad. And the problem with that is, is every time I fucking play Sid, the you know the headmaster, he always has he has uh, Cipher as his card, but he plays it in the top left corner and it has an eight on the bottom and a nine on the right. So I can't ever fucking get it. And fucking I, Cipher. And so I need to get to, I need to swap the fucking rules in this area, but it costs 30,000 gil to swap the rules. And that's a lot of money early on. So I just never ended up getting them. And I here's what I want to know. You're not going to be far enough yet to know the answer to this question, but do you think there's any chance that in this remaster, they've undone the bullshit at the end of the game where they lock you out of all the different. Oh, I highly doubt it. Uh, That is, I highly doubt they've changed that. That is by far the most frustrating thing. Like if you, if you accidentally proceed, be a cry. Uh, I for, there's some story reason. What? The looter cry. Is that one? I of the, don't remember. It's don't, been so long since I played Final Fantasy VIII. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. There's a story explanation for it. I guess. I'm sure it's there just, is. It's it just, was it's been a bullshit. While. Like <clears throat> Final Fantasy VIII could easily be my my favorite Final Fantasy ever, but I got to the point where I was like, I accidentally like progressed a little bit too far, and I locked myself out of like all of these different quests because I couldn't go back anywhere I needed to go. Uh, it's terrible. Um, I see. I thought I, you know, Bombader in chat brings up a good point. For a second, I was thinking maybe that was a technical limitation. Like they could only fit so much on a particular disc, and that happened when you went from disc three to four. Mm-hmm. I'm like, maybe now that it's not on limited to discs, they don't. I, do I doubt it. I think it's a story related thing that they're probably continued on. That's bullshit. It's gonna be a while before I get that far. Yeah. I mean, still, don't get me wrong. I am playing. Through nine, so. I am playing most of the game at three x speed, just because there's no point in having battles go slow uh and and running around the overworld is faster do you, but do you once tr- again do you trigger the the, the uh oh, yeah oh, oh wait. yeah his gun blade no i'm talking about the uh the, the way you triple you trigger the triple speed uh-huh. is it like because on, it, on it's, nine it's, it's, you, you it's, have to pause the game and tap oh the no it's button. it's it's a uh, l3 and r3 oh you shit. click in because there's three different ones you click i think left for like uh, the battle boost right for the triple speed and both uh, for uh, no encounters and yeah. they just toggle. So yeah, Damn, that sounds way more. But it is it is funny it. though because you know you, you I have triple speed and then it goes into a cutscene and I have steam so I have the frame counter up there and it just fifteen. Wow, all the cutscenes run at fifteen frames a second. Ooh. Um, but is yeah, it, does it, how do you feel about the way the remaster looks? I mean, I know it's probably a pretty minor. It it looks remotely better. Like it is not like well, amazing. It's cleaner. I'm, yeah. I'm assuming. Like, Let me ask you this though. Let me ask you this though. But, like the actual textures for like the. Oh yeah. Like so that's oh, the thing yeah. is I'll be in the. Do world. they stand out? Like do the models stand out like a lot from the backgrounds? Yeah. Yeah. So like I'll be okay. in battle and you'll see like the sky in the background and you'll see like clear divides in the sky texture every like like you know like I don't know the distance. I mean, it sounds screen. like exactly I, the I, way I told you guys when they showed the trailer of the remaster. Every single shot was like zoomed up in on a character model. Yeah, because they. I mean, I'll say yeah, this. I guess the most you could do. That's really, exactly but. what they did with Final Fantasy IX, and I think Final Fantasy, despite the fact that yes, there is a clear difference between the character model and the background, like it's still a better looking game. Nine, for sure. but the thing about nine is nine it, already it, looked better than it, eight, though. It That's came true. out later, yeah. and nine has like a really good <laughs> art style. Art style, yeah. yeah. So like I think it works better, but probably so. seven though. Woo! Sorry, I should I should have captured some footage. I I, I uh, it, like I said I, the only problem was I was just at an awkward part of the game. I'm not gonna capture footage of us like doing the fucking train heist. Like just that's like fo- boring shit. Just capture footage of Triple Triad. That's all we want. Yeah, that's all we want. That's true. We the want game. that music. Yeah, the game's so good. I mean, yeah, I'm I'm gonna continue to play. It's so all capture a little bit of footage maybe for next week if I'm still cool. playing it. Cool. And what's the other game you've been playing? So the other game that I spent. Uh, I think about an hour playing is my friend Pedro. This is the oh, I saw you playing the crazy two yeah. D like I was like shooting. that's random. Mm-hmm. Where uh, you uh, it's kind of yeah you're you're running around you're you're slowing down time you got bullet time you're shooting dudes you can lock on to multiple shooting dudes. off frying pans yeah you can ricochet shit. bullets cool shit, right you there. can do all that stuff. Is it as fun as it looks? Um, requested a refund from Steam. Oh Whoa! no. The second game I requested a refund for. What was the first one? Uh, fuck. Oh, uh, Edith Finch. Oh, gotcha. Hey, that game's awesome. I, I wasn't liking it, and mm. then hey, I eventually came out on Steam, Iron on Steam on uh, PlayStation Plus, so I have it anyway now. Mm. Um, you monster. <laughs> yeah, uh, kind of fucking boring. 
Really? Like, I just, I was yeah, not having I didn't, fun. I, didn't, I, didn't. I mean, like, I went through, I don't know, maybe eight, nine levels. Uh, and yeah, Carlos, apparently the same opinion as me. It's just kind of fucking boring. Is, the, is it because the levels are just dull? Like, the, like they're, are they are they banking so much on, like, the the physics mechanics, whatever, that they don't bother to make the levels around them interesting? Yeah, it's just, mm-hmm. it's a lot of, like, you running left to right. Uh, you'll go down some elevators uh, every once in a while, and then there's just dudes spread throughout where you have to get an angle on them and shoot them a couple times, and then they die. Uh, you'll go into a room where there's a bunch of dudes, so you activate bullet time, and you do 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 do, and then you keep going. And at the end of the level, it's like, oh, here's your score. You got a, like I got a, like a B every time. And I was just, and, and makes for and, a good trailer, and that's oh yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. The trailers looked amazing. Like the game looked fucking the awesome. The marketing team did their job. There's another game this year that I played. That kind of gave me similar vibes. I know some people like this one. Hold on, let me finish talking about Katana Zero. No, I just oh, wanted Katana to mention. Oh, I just no, wanted to mention I, I, Katana Zero. I'll agree Zero. with you as well. Like I got Katana Zero, and I'm, I'm in this, I got it on my Switch, and I've honestly played it for maybe two, three hours, and I, I kind of yeah. put I finished it, down. it, and I and I, makes for a good trailer. You, I'll, I'll agree. It definitely with doesn't live up to the potential. It seems like it had that. Uh, my friend Pedro does have a good soundtrack. The music's good. Uh, but like I said, it just, I found myself wanting to do other things while I was playing the game. Like, I ended up fucking, like, pulling up, like, uh, like YouTube videos. Because I was just fucking bored playing the game. Hmm. Um, and it's just one of those things where I, like... You fell into a YouTube hole while playing the game, and, like, ten minutes later realized, oh, shit, I was playing a game. Yeah. Well, it, it, it's just... Yeah. It's, it's, and it's his just, legs are too short. Yeah. <laughs> they are a little short. Um, <laughs> and it, it is just more about the fact that, like... You know, I'll go into an area and like little banana, who is your friend Pedro, like pops up and he's like, "Oh, this area is blah blah blah," and you go the through. The banana is Pedro. Yeah, yeah, that's your friend Pedro. Um, and you shoot some dudes, and then the level's over, and you do the next one. Hooray! And then, yeah, and I just like I I I don't know, and I don't have an answer as to how to make the game better either. It's like, just I like I really maybe, don't. Maybe it's just not worth it. Just... And. <clears throat> It's one of those things where it's like, I find that there are some, I do have some issues with the controls. Like what will often happen is one of the things you can do besides shooting dudes is you can kick them. Yeah. So first of all, his short legs do come into play, Brad. He can't kick that far. And the problem is, I is like, like, it's one of those situations where when you kick, like, you no all momentum is lost. So if you're standing and kicking, you can't move. So if you try and kick and move, he just keeps kicking. And mm. like, there'll be a dude literally like three feet away from me and my foot will be like right <laughs> there, but I can't keep kicking. I have to stop move and then kick if i if i try and kick and move he just stands still mm. and there's been multiple times where there's a guy's come like pops out of a door behind me and i'm like oh let me kick him but i didn't press that direction fast enough so now i'm kicking in the wrong direction and you can't easily switch to the other and it's just kind of those like, little things <coughs> that it just i think like i don't know like i just i hey, was not if you're not enjoying it. It, you're not enjoying it you got and I'm I'm, I'm I'm glad ref- this is like a perfect situation. Like like I said, I don't refund games often, but I'm glad that it's there for this. Yeah. Because even though I was excited for this game, and I was like, oh great, a 2019 game from uh Devolver publishes one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, from Devolver, I like Devolver. Um, it, you, let me let me hit it, they because they had a sale this past weekend. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, let me pick it up on sale. It was only 15 bucks. I'm like, this sounds great. And then after like maybe hour hour and a half, I was like, nope, I'm done. All right. Well, they can't all be winners, I suppose. That's true. <clears throat> all right. Um, real quick, I forgot to mention. I, I don't want. I don't want to double back to Blair Witch, but I do want to mention one thing. I completely forgot. I completely like glazed over the dog situation Bullet. in that game. Yeah. You said that he, he points out uh, the bad. It's stuff. It's cool. You can give Haunting him. Com- you can give him commands. You can like tell him to like. You can, if you you have an item, you can have him like smell it and then like go seek stuff out. Sometimes he'll just like branch off a path and you can follow him. He'll like dig stuff up and find like, you know, lore shit that like mm. creeps you out. That kind of stuff. One time I was like trying to get into a truck and I was like, oh, how the fuck am I getting this truck? And all of a sudden I hear bullet behind me and I turn around and he's sitting there holding the keys and I was like, <laughs> you just hear like, bloop, bloop. <laughs> I was yeah, like, the I was keys like, are oh, in his mouth. Cool. But yeah, they, they, I just wanted to say they lean really hard on like the relationship between the character and the dog, and the dog plays a really big role in the game, and they do some, okay. they do some pretty cool stuff with it. Anyways, mm. but the game, the other game, the last game I want to talk about tonight that I have been playing. Oh, can I mention the thing? Is can I Black do my Betty. thing? Okay, yes. Okay. No, go ahead. Do you think, bro? I forgot you wanted to do that. Go ahead. By the way, I thought it was funny when Eris played that game. He kept calling it Goodbye, Dr. Pablo. 
Wait, who? Ah, never mind. Hey, so... <laughs> um, it's a bad name. Uh, okay, so I wasn't originally going to talk about anything this week because I haven't played anything new. Um, sorry, Astral Chain fans. I'll get to it eventually. Um, but I have been playing a lot of Fail Seal, so I thought instead of talking about nothing, I'll do my top five... Tips of the week. Fail seal tips of the week. I talked about it a couple weeks ago. You know I love this game. It's a super faithful Final Fantasy Tactics homage. It's great. Hopefully some of you have bought it by now. So I'm going to very quickly do my top five fail seal Arbiter's Mark. If you're in chat. Tips you, of the week. If you're in chat and you bought fail seal on Brad's recommendation, speak now. So he, Number here's, one. Here's the truth, Brad. I have no idea what the fuck fail seal is. Fail seal Arbiter's Mark. L- listen to the listen it's, it's or Fantasy watch Tactics. the podcast gotcha. from two weeks ago. Uh, the podcast I was wanted to be on, but yes. y'all didn't let me. <laughs> Indie the one Final that we Forgot to invite you back. <laughs> yeah. Tip number one: I mentioned a little bit a couple weeks ago. Items. Do not ignore items. You can upgrade items. There's a class that specializes in items. Um, they are often like can be more powerful than even like your healing magic and stuff. No. Uh, tip number two. Even though you unlock so many great classes, do not ignore the starting classes. Classes like the very first starting classes like Scoundrel and Mercenary have some of the best passives and active abilities in the game. Like Scoundrel Sneak Attack is like a super low mana like skill that does like a ton of damage and even works with a range. So don't ignore your early classes just because you start unlocking cool later ones. Mm -hmm. Tip number three, status effects are king. Buffs and debuffs will win the day. I will say there are passives like permanence, which add a turn to the length of a status effect, which could come in a huge amount of handy when you're using status effects like charm or sleep, which can dramatically uh, uh, change the, the pace of battle. Also malice, which increases your status effect percentages. They may have sucked in Final Fantasy Tactics, but they're great here. Uh, tip number four. Boots, boots, and boots. You can equip like four pairs of boots on the same person. How does that work? I don't know. So you can get boots that extend your movement range. And movement range in a tactics game like this is essential, right? (laughs) Because it helps you get behind an enemy, helps you navigate like the very intricate map design, which is great in this. Uh, Equip multiple boots on a character. He said four pairs of boots. They synergize with abilities where the further you move, uh, you, you heal. Where the further you move, you get MP. You 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 put a few boot pairs of boots on a character. All of a sudden, they're moving all the way across the map, getting a ton of MP and ready to like nuke the enemy. Boots, boots, and boots. And my final fail seal tip of the Don't week. You mean they're ready to give the enemy the boot? The boot, yeah, <laughs> or the nuke spell. Uh, and my final fail seal tip of the week number five. When you recruit a character named Bizarro, you get him in the story. He is a bug creature, and unlike other class characters who could switch between classes he uh through killing monsters and battle he unlocks the monster class and he could basically turn into that monster class and has its own skill tree that that monster class has uh you can get uh there's these floating jellyfishes that are annoying and they uh cast magic and if you kill like five of them in a in a, uh, in a battle he can unlock that class what they don't tell you in anywhere on the skill tree um you just have to know by switching that class like the jellyfish, he'll float. And it's probably the earliest way you can get float in the game, which lets, gives you access to like the chests that seem like unreachable um, early on in the game. Get that class early on, and you can start reaching some of those uh, chests that which have really good items in them. Anyways, that's my top five fail seal tips of the week. Maybe next week when I play no- nothing as well besides this game, I'll have five more tips. But uh, I should have come up with like a cool saying, like adventure mm-hmm. on, arbiters. Or some shit like that. Yeah, but cool. Fail seal ahead. Fail seal. <laughs> Arbiter's mark. Fail seal ahead. Full, ah, full fa- sail ahead. I get, I get, I get. Fail seal ahead. Anyways, don't, seal. don't sleep on this game. Uh, it's so dope. It's you got also, better gameplay than Fire Emblem. You also need float in Final Fantasy VIII. It is especially important when you're fighting the brothers. They cash earth, earth spells. There's earthquake. Yeah, and yeah, so you yeah, have to yeah. be floating to avoid those. All right. I have one last game to talk about. Jesus, Nick. Yeah. I know. I went hard this week on games. Uh, I'm playing Man of Medan. Bam, blam. Man of Medan. Black Betty. Man of Medan. Yeah. I'm playing, oh, Man, Black of, I'm playing Man of Medan. I'm not finished with it yet. I've uh, played Dude, a... Word on the Street is it sucks. Okay. Word on the Street is a little... Okay. Hyperbolic. Not that harsh, but... Yeah. Uh, 
I, I've, I will say this, and maybe about. this is what's rubbing people the wrong way. I, I've played three hours so far, and this game does... So I was worried, you know, this is going to be a very short game compared to... It's not very long. I mean, it's not very long. It's not like... Yeah. like Until Dawn was it's like only 14 30 hours. Bucks. This it's... is like six six hours, I hear. Mm. I've played three hours. I, I have played for three hours, and the shit still hasn't hit the fan. Oh. It spends a lot of time building the doing the setup introducing the characters establishing relationships which is all fine and dandy like i really appreciate that stuff otherwise this would feel like a very cheap like super rushed not atmosphere you know it would it wouldn't feel scary like it, like this takes its time getting to the point where like i sp- i played for an hour and a half and i wasn't even on the ship yet you know what mm. i mean ooh but like you're you're like you're having this reaction. I feel like a lot of people probably had this reaction. But like if they had rushed it and they had just like shoved through all that stuff and skipped all of the setup, like this would have felt very like rushed and cheesy, and the game mm. probably would have suffered for it. Like I'm really liking the slower mm. pace, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. but it is pretty cliche as far as like hor- like like until dawn does a really good job of keeping you kind of guessing like what like oh like when you finally find out like what's actually happening you're like oh shit like that mm-hmm. is not what i was expecting is it just like mr robots crazy or something uh, no not no. necessarily but like you know there's supernatural elements right mm. you you kind of think you know what what what's happening but by the time you get to the end it's like something that you know there's like a fo- there's like an urban legend or a folklore that, that yeah. they're focusing on and i didn't like i had no idea that was coming uh-huh. like what it actually ended up being I, i'm trying to avoid spoilers here for until dawn even though that's sure. four years old but um i mean i never i mean it. this game is very clearly about a haunted ghost ship Ooh, right is this scary dude there have been some th- has anybody died in your game yet no not yet Damn. um but I also made it to the end of Until Dawn. I only lost one person. Okay. So, you know, okay. I, I don't like to brag. I don't like to there. brag, but I think okay. I'm pretty good at these games. There's been several moments where someone could have died and I got them out. Mm-hmm. Um, this game takes place in Birmingham. 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 Oh, my God. Damn it, Nolan. <laughs> Damn it. Um, but now that I'm actually on the ship and you're, like, trying to find your way off the ship, they've done some really good, like slowly trickling out clues and and some spooky encounters or whatnot it's surprisingly when i started recording this footage shit started to happen a lot faster like i started to run into a lot more supernatural shit happening but there's been times where like so the game does these like really cool like camera it's a very cinematic game just like mm-hmm. until dawn was like those do these really cool camera pans and they kind of like they funnel you into, into like down certain pathways or whatever and the camera will kind of move dynamically as you're walking and sometimes like i tweeted this the other day because it freaked me out so bad but like i was walking down a hall and the camera was slowly panning and like as i walked through the door as it panned just far enough to the right there was like a woman standing in the corner right where i had just walked mm. and, but but by the time you see because by the time angle. you see her the camera angle changes because you're in cool. the hallway yeah. That's cool. and i was like too scared i was like I could back up and go look at that, but I'm just gonna create use the PS4 share option to like record the video that I just yeah. watched and like play it back and see if I really just saw what I th- think I saw. And uh, <laughs> and they've done a few things like that that are really fucking cool. But yes, I'm three and a half hours into this game, and like none of the characters know that the ship they're on is legit haunted, mm-hmm. and like they're still kind of like unraveling clues and like trying to figure stuff out. I think the acting is maybe a step down from Until Dawn. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it was it was great. I mean, it did have I an mean, Academy Award winning say, actor in it, but I will say, well, it was decent. This is, uh, I think, maybe it's more a fault of the writing than it is the acting. Because I think the, the line delivery is fine, but some of the lines they're having to deliver are not good. Mm. Like it's one of those situations where it's like, okay, this feels like like a forty year old guy who's really out of touch tried to write dialogue for like you know. Mm-hmm teenagers sure. and has no idea how teenagers talk to each other that kind of thing he's just heard key words like yeah meme yeah and tiktok but with that said i i've because they spend so much time like focusing on setup and character building and whatnot like i'm i feel pretty attached to the characters so i'm definitely to the point where i want to watch you die I, no i want to get i want to try and make it through alive as many as possible like they spend a lot of time doing stuff like you know you go d- diving down to this like sh- uh, old plane wreck from like World War Two or whatever, and then you know you find some shit down there, and then one of the characters proposes to his girlfriend, like oh, you know, on a ghost ship. 
No, no. Bef- this is before shit hits the... Remember? Before oh. shit hits the fan, right? Well, I thought you were on a ghost ship and shit hadn't hit the fan yet. No, the... F- the ghost ship is the ship? No, you spend, like, the first hour and a half of the game, like, on a... Like, you're... You and some friends are going... Have chartered a boat to take you out to this... Uh, this plane wreck. Uh-huh. And you are, like, amateur scuba divers or whatever. Or, like, uh, what do they call them? Spelunk... Like... You don't spelunk, spelunk in the water. Spelunk I'm sp- cave diving. People who try and find, you know, shipwrecks, and they go down and explore them. Is there a term for that? I feel like there's a term for this. There's got to be, right? Like a salvager? Pirates? The point, may, maybe a salvager, I don't know. But they're amateur sal- they, they they found clues that, that led them to this uh, so to the like shipwreck, Nathan so they're Drake. like, they've chartered someone to take them out there, and they're going to swim down there before yeah. anybody else has a chance to rummage through it, and they're going to explore it for, for themselves. That, uh-huh. That's what they're doing. And then some shit happens, and they end up stumbling across this ghost ship in the middle of the ocean and they have to they have to board it for reasons i'm not going to specify and when they do they start to find all this creepy shit do any of them uh, ha- have a child people are saying diver but like divers dive for any number of reasons these these are kids who specifically try and find shipwrecks then go down and swim through them and find hopefully find like cool archaeological finds mm-hmm. that kind of stuff but they're like amateurs they're like you know they're drinking beer on the boat, and they're like, "Oh, this is gonna be sweet. Let's go down to the, you know that kind of shit." Hmm. I know, so I, I know, suck. I just sounded totally like the person I just yeah, described who has no idea the, how kids talk. Yeah. But you know, treasure hunters, let's go with treasure. Do hunters. you know how kids talk these no, days? No, I don't. I'm, I'm at this point, I'm completely out of touch. I'm waiting for Jack Nicholson to pop out of nowhere. This is this. There's a lot of inspiration from things like The Shining. You mentioned that, like, I, I don't know. I still think this is a really cool concept. This, this, uh, and and anthology of horror games i i think mm-hmm. it's the 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 formula that they established with until dawn totally still works mm-hmm. like it is there's a lot of cool decisions you have to make there's you're still having finding the things that give you like premonitions of possible outcomes in the future that you have to kind of try to interpret and then make decisions on the fly like that kind of stuff still really really mm-hmm. cool Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if the story is. Curious pan what, out. what you're gonna think once. Yeah, you, I, I am too. I'm gonna through. I mean, I'm gonna finish it. You know, probably this weekend. So, I will let you guys know next week how I feel about it in the end. But how much was it? Or was it's, it? It's this is a tw- it's, uh, thirty. It's thirty bucks. Thirty. Okay. Yeah, it's ha- it's you know it's not a full price game. And um, how many games in this anthology are they plan on doing? They said they already have plans for like four or five, and they've already really when you beat. And I mentioned this last week when you beat this game, yeah. they roll a trailer for the next. I week. watched the trailer. That one looks cool. Cool. I'm excited. Like the I'm fact just... that like every single one is going to be dramatically different is pretty exciting. I yeah. I think I think it's the idea, the concept here is still really strong. Yeah, I'm just curious as to like the production cycle and what we can expect. So I don't know. I would imagine they're probably working on at least two of these things at a time. I mean, they would have to if they already have a trailer for the next one, which is supposed to come out early yeah. next year. Like, and this one just released. Is it their... early next year? Yeah, I think they said January or February. Oh wow, oh, that's geez. cool. Yeah, maybe give some time for people to play this one. Maybe give. I mean, it's only six hours long. Give, so. give some time to oh, make it. I, good. I need about eight months before I can get to the next game. Maybe. Oh, okay, gotcha. I should read some reviews though. I wonder why it got it scored pretty low. I think a lot of it has to do with the acting, and it is a little cliche. Like, I think Until Dawn is a much more original concept from a storytelling perspective well, and this is a, also and this also like feels less open this feels less open like mm-hmm. until dawn is a much bigger like you can wander from like the main house in until dawn to like the cabin out in the woods and you can take you can there's all these branching paths and stuff this feels Sorry. a little bit more guided okay. hmm. it does have an academy award-winning actor in it as well until dawn yes yes that is true yeah H- hayden as, panettiere <laughs> no. yes correct no um, she wanna I will award? I will check back in next week and tell you how I feel about it when it's all said and done. Um, but for now, let's take a break. And when we come back, we got some new topics to cover. Brad's gonna Brad's gonna walk us through yesterday's huge Nintendo Direct, which was surprisingly packed. Oh, with I'm gonna stuff. cherry pick and piss off all the there Nintendo are fans. things in there. There are some things in there that didn't need to exist, (laughs) but they exist. Um, So we'll do that. And of course, we'll answer some questions from our supporters on Patreon and Twitch. But uh, yeah, if you're watching us live, don't go anywhere. We'll be back in just a moment.
cool stuff, Nick. Welcome back. Welcome back to the show, everybody. What do we got? We got news? <laughs> yeah, we got news. <laughs> we got news. All right. Chris Davis, you have a little switcher thing there. Hit us with a news topic. Okay, so and there's, there's okay. two news topics that I think are okay, and then there's yes, one I don't yeah. think we ought to do. You can do, leave that one but... on. Yeah, we didn't even need to have that discussion right how, now. How about we start with the sad one and then work our way up to happy? What's, what's the sad one? Oh, yes. This so, is this is more out than just field. sad. This is uh, troubling. Ikumi Nakamura officially leaves Tango Gameworks. You may remember her as the lovely face of E3 2019. Uh, she made the, her debut at uh, was that the Microsoft? Oh, no, no but that's the Bethesda, Bethesda conference to announce um, Ghostwire Tokyo, and uh, it was very spooky. She was announced as the creative director on the game, and also as kind of like. Uh, like Shinji Mikami was her mentor, right? Yeah, they're um, kind of setting her up to be like his successor. Kind yeah, of, as, basically. So this, obviously, sh- you know, we don't know the details of why she's leaving. It, it's it's being framed obviously more as like a uh, personal choice, but we do know she doesn't have a job anymore. She yeah, she, she didn't is. take like some offer. Yeah, she is actively well, that that we know of. She well, hasn't that, made a formal announcement. No, yeah. but she well, no, but she's asking. She she's has. saying if you want to work with me reach out to yeah. me like that kind of stuff um, my 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 question and i was actually talking about that with a co-worker today was did she maybe get a lot of offers from western companies as like freelance work you know what i'm saying i know i i don't know i know she i don't know how much art she was doing recently but i know that's what she used to do a lot of yeah. and my question is did she maybe find that moving out of like the japanese business side into a more Creative. capitalist western uh, self-driven kind I mean, of art style that she could maybe make more money doing that potentially. Well, okay. I, don't know. I'm just, I mean, I, I mean, I mean. So like that is something possible. that could be possible, like after maybe Ghostwire shipped. Mm-hmm. But it seems to be like they just announced this project. She's creative Correct. director. She comes out on stage, makes a big splash. Everybody's happy. Her to, for her to leave after that seems really strange. No, I no, I'm not saying it's not strange. Uh, it also begs the question of what is the status of Ghostwire Tokyo? This yeah. like this that game looked so cool to see this canceled. It would it would Did almost I say be Ghost like. Of it, I mean, I the, the idea of it was cool. It. it was Sorry, a Ghostwire cool pre-rendered Tokyo. trailer that meant nothing. No, but I'm saying but concept, it was conceptually. Yeah, like for me, for, it had a very unique creative like artistic vision that was very well noted or very well presented in that trailer and yes. like it got people very excited it got me very excited to see something like that canceled if it i mean if it's in danger of being canceled i don't know but like that's obviously the concern that people have right now or she um, got she got kicked from her position and possible. maybe said fuck this yeah. maybe um which has actually happened before because like, I, I believe she was the original creative director on evil within and then it like maybe wasn't working out, and she got kind of replaced hmm. by Shinji Mikami. Yeah, I, th- I think he sort of stepped in. So does this the question? I guess my question now is like, if 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 Ghostwire Tokyo is not in danger of being canceled, does that mean Shinji Mikami is potentially stepping back into creative director? Uh, he, I know he role? doesn't want to, right? Or it, it could be the dude who who directed Evil Within Two. Could be, and you know that was a fine game. Um, that was a great game. Yeah, it was like it was fucking awesome. excellent game. There is, yeah, Nick. Yeah. Jesus. Oh my god, everybody calm down. It's a great like, game. Not putting Evil Within 2 in my top 10 games of the year is one of my wow. biggest regrets. Evil Within 2, no. Detroit, yay? I gotta hate you. I'm just, I'm just trying to figure out the facts. Those didn't come out in the same year, so the, you can't Fine. compare them, you son of a bitch. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm a little concerned. I, You know... She seems like a very creative person, right? She seems like she has a... She like, does. Even, you know, even in her, like, Twitter announcement of her leaving, she had this, like, really awesome, like, art thing that she did. I was like, oh, that looks very vibrant, <laughs> colorful. Like, like she obviously has a lot of talent, like... Sure, but she hasn't shipped a game with her as lead. I know. And, and this the, was the one. And this was the one, but, like, my question is, how much of what made that trailer look so enticing was her creative vision? And is any of that creative... Is, is any of that creativity in danger of dissipating well, now that she is no longer on the project? Well, let me ask this we'll question know that. instead. I know. Like, what if the game's a lot further along than we think it is? Honestly, I think if it was further along than we thought it was, they probably would have shown a little more. Yeah. I don't. But- it's not like a game company to go to a big trade show and show off a really non, like... 
a, a trailer that doesn't show much of a game if they already have a lot of the that, game. And, 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 Most of the time, we see it the complete other way around. If we're seeing nothing really of the game itself, the game is years out. And if we're seeing like gameplay footage, the game's probably about to come out. Maybe, but then we have other examples like EA launched a fucking Plants vs. Zombies game yesterday. But also, that's very di- with that, just we're they announced it versus zombies we're, versus we're, like we're a triple A. Need for Speed Heat is another example. A but game that comes that's out that's in that's six already weeks an annual franchise. franchise. You're, giving, you're giving these extreme one-offs. Also, but just, saying for the also, most part, even if you concede that, you wouldn't. You, are you suggesting the job of the creative director is done and she just left? It's possible that, but still, you would you you would be at the company to ship the game. You would, yeah, you would see the game through. Yeah, creative director is not the kind of role that just ends with, you know, way ahead of launch, right? Like the question, like if if based on her leaving the project this week and the fact that we are we're fairly confident that this game is at least a year or more away, oh, yeah, right? Like if if that game ships with her name still in the credits as a creative director, I'll be shocked, shocked, yeah. shocked. I say. I mean, yeah, some of these companies can be ruthless, like not even putting people who aren't at the company when a game ships in the credits. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. I don't know. It, it's it's cause for concern. I have a lot of... I I. That was my biggest highlight of E3 this year. I hope to God it doesn't, like, fall apart. You know, I wouldn't want this to be another PT situation where everybody gets all excited about something well, that looks can, super cool. If and this is, also, apart. if this is Tango Gameworks' only game, can they survive a canceled project like That's this? That's another question. Because like, I'm pretty sure Evil Within 2 didn't set the it, charts yeah, on fire. it did not make that much money for them. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I don't know. This is concerning. Hopefully... We find out more, or they can do something to kind of alleviate these concerns. Because right Hope now, so. I'm sure a lot of people are on edge. Um, and what's the other news topic we have, Chris Davis? Oh, it's the big one. All right, Brad, here we go. You uh, ready to give us a recap of yesterday's? Knock out. Yeah, sure. I didn't, I didn't Nintendo get a chance to watch it. it so who who did I watch it? Me. I watched it. I was not able to watch them. Okay, I so caught the highlights, but you know, I haven't even seen the highlights. I'm going to say some stuff. It's not going to be everything. Get ready, Nolan. It's not going to be in order. You're not going to believe this. I literally know nothing. All right. Jedi Outcast and Jedi Academy are coming to the Switch. Okay. That's actually pretty cool. Yeah. Out of fucking nowhere. I would have liked Dark Forces 1 and 2. What a strange, like... That's strange. Like, just plucking that one out of, like, thin air. Devil May Cry 2 is coming to the Switch. That's bizarre. It's weird it's not, that I don't It's care. not bizarre. Well, they like, did the Devil first one. Devil May Cry 1 is even on the Switch. It is. Wait, it is? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, when they, did that happen? They've done the ports. Yeah. They did one, and now they're doing two, from what I recall. Okay, that suddenly makes... That's suddenly less shocking. I was not aware that Devil May Cry 1 made it to the Switch. What's shocking is that they're doing them individually. That's because true. it's Capcom. What are they selling them for? I have no idea. Probably, Probably 20 money. bucks. Oh, yeah. Well, the SNES good. has come to Switch. Through the free uh, online... Or for, from the... For the paid online service and uh a so, lot of them launched today you gotta say the full name of the product though the super nintendo games the, the super switch. nintendo entertainment system nintendo switch online wait that's the full you know, that's the full fucking wait, hold thing. on so you you get to buy these games it's no like- no no if you if you're subscribed to their online service uh-huh. they're free and they launched a lot of them like today, and there's some good ass. There's games. some good shit. Can yeah, you, you know, us- you're talking Super Metroid. You're talking about Link to the Past. They also got some like, like Demons Crest is on that list. Like there's some a deep cuts. Yeah, there's a rewind function. You know, Super it, EDF is on that list. Super EDF. Did that even come out in the West? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't think anybody was really playing that here. Yeah, but like out of nowhere, out. that game. There's some deep cuts on this list. Yeah. Well, what else did they announce? Um. Oh, also the controller, but yeah, but whatever. A controller. Yeah, they they're, they're releasing a, a Super Nintendo, Nintendo, Super Nintendo Super controller Nintendo. with the uh the the modern control, so ZL and ZLR on it too. Gotcha. Mm. Um, thirty bucks a piece. Doom sixty four is coming out in November. The port for in six or for uh the remaster, I guess, if you will. Well, how do people feel Switch? about Doom sixty four? Like kind of like cult. It has kind of cult status. Like it is. It is not the same game. Like so, people. Think that it's like a port of Doom? It's not that. No, it, it is, is a separate else. Doom game, and from it's good. All right, 
Carlos got, is a big fan. It's got unique demon design. It's got unique level design. Yeah. And and you uh, can play it without weapons, having to too. use an N64 controller now. Yes. Yeah. It And it's, it's the same port that recently came out for the other systems of 64. What? Yeah. The 64 didn't come out for the any other systems yet. Well, there's there's Doom 64 like EX thing. Well, there's like a fan made like kind of Source Engine port or some shit that came out like last year or two years ago. That you know, so now you can play through the game on PC, but uh, it hasn't officially come out anywhere. I'll have to. Look I don't think. It. All right, next. What, what else did they announce? Uh, Divinity Original Sin Two got shadow dropped. Uh, the reason it, I think it's worth. Oh, I did see that for the Switch. The reason I think it's worth mentioning is because it's it's got cross saves with the Steam version. That is, which I don't think I've ever nice. seen before. I saw that because Brad tweeted about yeah. it. I didn't even know that was possible. <laughs> I didn't know it was possible either, but more of that, please. Yeah. So I'll, I'll take two. Little Town Hero, which I think was just previously called Town. This is the game from uh, Game Freak, mm-hmm. and uh, it's coming out in October. And Toby Fox is doing the soundtrack. Who? Who? Composer of Undertale. Oh, oh. gotcha. So good shit. Um. Yeah, good shit. Which I don't know. I think that game looks like kind of it looks whatever, good. but. That soundtrack is going to be fucking at, great. I was looking at some screenshots the other day, and I was like, "This." I feel like it looked more interesting to me the first I time I saw it. I, I, think, I think I do know one announcement because I saw it on the Twitter. Tokyo too. Mirage Sessions is getting a port for the Switch. This is a Wii U game that... Uh, is this the one with the Pomeranian? It, Wait, no. What am I thinking of? Hold the, on. Like, the zoo? Tokyo the, Mirage Sessions is jungle? Fire Emblem Cross Shin Megami Tensei. Uh, but it's it's very much its own thing. It's actually pretty, you know, light, well liked. But no one really played it because it was a Wii U game. Um, I think it ended up becoming, you know, kind of hard to find. But now it's getting a Switch port, which is really cool because you know, you know, people are into like Persona and stuff these mm-hmm. days. And they're adding so, Fire Emblem characters. and Fire Emblem. Well, it was already kind of a cross between Fire Emblem, but they said they're adding more Fire Emblem characters or something. Yeah. It's always been a weird kind of crossover thing, but um, it's going to be $60, which, you know, these Wii U ports are weird, but I think feel like it's kind of taking advantage of the fact that no one had a Wii U, but $60 for a port, come on. Well, mention that other port. Um, Xenoblade Chronicles X? Hold on. Well, Xenoblade, the first one, is getting a port. I know. I feel like Switch. I was like, oh, that's, I, I got excited yeah. too, and I was like, what? I mean, what? whatever. Pe- people, that's probably like the most loved of the Xenoblade games. Not honestly, from me. I, I honestly, it's not my favorite. Uh, maybe my least favorite of the three. Actually, I wanted a port of X. Would have been cool. Um, but you that's know, what I want. Maybe, I will buy it. Maybe eventually. One. Yeah. Um, also, I don't know which one he, what he wanted me to say, but uh, let's keep going with my random assortment of uh, shit from this direct. Terry. Is coming to Terry Bogart from uh, oh, Fatal Fury from yeah. King, King of Fighters is the next Smash Brothers character. Which that was a delightful reveal. Y'all, y'all got so watch the reveal that. trailer was really cool. Uh, I think Terry. Would I get anything out of it if I don't even know who that is? Uh, it's entertaining. Yeah. No. I mean, whatever. It, it's he, shot in like Neo Geo, like like cinematic. It's sequences. a little bit of a bummer to me because he's a fighting game character and a fighting game character that's been in a lot of crossovers before. Um. So, I mean, whatever. Fighting game characters aren't as cool in Smash because what's cool about Smash is when you see like Pikachu, but all of a sudden he's put into like a fighting game and he's fighting, yeah. you know, Link and stuff. Like a character is not normally a fighter. Yeah. Is now fighting. We fought as Terry yeah. for years and years and years, you know? Like, they're g- kind of missing. Give the me point. Andy or, or Wonder Red. But Fuck didn't you. they also drop. Uh, you, Nintendo. Didn't, you, didn't they also drop Banjo Kazooie? Yesterday. No, that was known. But yeah, they, no, they, about that. they, no, but I mean, they like, showed they some footage. Just, like, I didn't know. Do we have a release oh, date? Oh, this? they shadow dropped him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's out now. Um, Banjo. Cause That's Ang, pretty Ang, cool. Kazooie. In fact, after the direct. Uh, Sans Sakurai is not in Smash. A, uh, Sans is not in Smash. Fuck you. Yeah, uh, fuck there's you. some new outfits. There's some new me fighter outfits, which yeah. some people are really into. Sans is one of them because of fucking memes and hype. He's not even the coolest character from Undertale. <laughs> Fuck you. I mean, uh, Go sorry. Mom? I'm sorry. Brad's passionate about this. Uh, Goemon got a me fighter outfit, but you know what? Me suck. Me fighters suck. Outfits, you know what? If you're a true Goemon fan, probably not good enough for you. But you know what? At least Goemon had a big fucking weird head. I guess Sans has a big fucking weird head. Maybe they're making choices based on who has big weird heads like me's. So I guess that That's works. True, so they fit. Sure. Yeah. 
Um, next? Papyrus would have been better. Uh, next? Stop rushing me. Hold on. Gotta keep. I'm going mind. out of order in my list as well, so it's very confusing. <laughs> Why would you do that? Why even make the list? Deadly Premonition That's got a port for Switch. Oh, sorry. Also, the other one. This they one. announced a sequel. That's the one I heard oh about. Oh, my God. Swery is writing and directing. Mm-hmm. A sequel to Deadly Premonition is coming out for Switch. Maybe this other things. Thing people are, I'm, this is the thing people are excited for. The, the title is specifically Deadly Premonition 2, A Blessing in Disguise. Yeah. I should probably finish the first one. Deadly Premonition is a definitely a cult hit. Some I started love playing it. it back in the day. I streamed a bunch of it, and it's, I was enjoying it. I just kind of mm, ran out of I found time. it so like tedious but it is a little tedious it has its charms for I look sure. at it from 10 feet away never having played it I still don't understand that game it's, I don't understand what people like about it it's like That's, bizarre yeah. it's in Twin Peaksy and yeah, it's, wacky. it's like Twin Peaks through the lens of a, a Japanese developer mm-hmm who's also known to be his own kind of weird. Quirky. So oh, yeah. it's like quirky. I played D4. Doing, tw- yeah, okay, exactly. You yeah. played D4. And you know what? That's the stuff I wrote down from the Nintendo Direct. There was also some Pokemon shit, some Animal Crossing shit. But those were known quantities. I know people are very excited about those games, especially those Pokemon people. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's all I got. If, if I'm forgetting anything else, please mention it in chat. But otherwise... There was a uh, high res announced a new IP. Yeah. Uh, Overwatch is coming to Switch. Overwatch oh yeah, that Switch, was a, yeah. that was a big deal. Okay, uh, that's how they opened it. Yeah, it's a lot of ports and uh, Deadly Premonition too. So that's cool, right? Hey, at least it was Premonition at least it was too. a pretty jam packed direct. That was nice. Yeah. Oh, so, oh no, You're no forgetting. Metroid Prime HD trilogy though. You forgot they showed off a trailer for The Witcher 3 Complete Edition. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, that my is what I wanna, God. It's not even that the first is, time they showed that. That is why they showed I want to That is why I want to talk to Ed now that he's back from PAX, because I'm sure he got his... I'm, I'm, he must have. He must have found that. It no, was this, this was all in-game graphics. This was all in-Switch. No, I know, but they had it playable at PAX. It looks so bad. I would imagine. It's on Switch. It was like lower than the lowest res you could have. All right. I can't wait to see what that game looks like anyways i'm um, pretty sure the game runs at 240p that's good that's good for news <laughs> that's good for news lucky. um no one do you do you want to do questions first or do you want me to do supporter spotlight first let's do supporter spotlight all right i was i knew you were going to say that i probably should have been more prepared by actually having that pulled up um should have i haven't told anybody who the supporter spotlight is yet and i usually do that before the show so it's going to be a surprise i want to remind everybody if you since we have a lot of new patrons we have a lot of yeah. new twitch subscribers uh if you have not yet you can go to discord.gg slash four player there is a channel called supporter spotlight and there is a pinned message in that channel with a link to a form where you can answer some questions about your personal tastes and games about yourself and uh we'll pick some someone at random every week and we'll read a few of their responses this week our what supporter to bayonetta three Good question. Good that was question. announced before Astral Chain, and Astral Chain is out. <laughs> that is true. Uh, this week, our supporter spotlight, again, haven't told this person yet, is Lionheart21. No! And he's from Indiana. Cool. Indiana. Thank you. Again, a yeah. reminder, we love to find, we love to know a little bit more about yourself. Tell us where you're from. You know, Indiana. That's good. That's vague enough. Mailing address. But it's good to know. Yeah. Social security number. Yeah. Tell us all that stuff. Um, <laughs> your high school mascot. Your mother's maiden Wait, name. First pet. First pet. The street you grew up on. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, first girlfriend. What is one interesting fact about yourself that you would like the community to know? Lionheart says, I got married a few years ago and we had a video game slash geek themed wedding. That's cool. Okay. Uh, we had Pokeball ring holders. Uh oh. <laughs> They're divorced already. <laughs> um, flowers made from book covers slash comic books, arcade booths, uh, a Nintendo decorated cake, and a bunch of other random decorations. The grandparents did not approve. <laughs> did they not Fuck approve em. or they did not understand? Uh, it's probably both. You know. Dude, they, I, they, 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 usually they don't approve of things. Dude, that I had a fucking... Adults? I had a well, I dick used that blood on my cake and my grandmother just laughed. That's because you have a cool grandmother. Well, she right? didn't know what was going on. She's just like, oh, okay. Uh, you know, but that's a very common thing. You know, older folks tend to not approve of the things they don't understand, which is, you know, most things. I feel like, like I don't understand um, all these uh, me fans. Exactly. All right. You are Top five folks. games of all time. Good transition. 
Top five games of all time. Lionheart says, and this is a disclaimer before I read this. I only played sports games and Call of Duty games for a long time, so this list will mostly be newer stuff. Mm. Uh, it's cool to see someone branch out, right? Um, so, number five. Stardew Valley. That's a good one. Good choice. Good I have idea. no idea why I love this game so much, but I've poured so many hours into this game, and it's the main reason I bought a Switch. Hmm. I actually really do still want to play that, especially it's on the Switch. It's a great game. It is. I'm afraid I'll get like super hooked on it, though. You will. You um, will. It's funny how he says most of these will be newer games, but his number four is Pokemon Red. <laughs> Okay. Um, this, he said most. He, he, right, he did say most. Uh, this was my entrance into video games, and it pretty much defined my childhood. Also, Charmander is the ultimate starter. Who also, here? To be fair, you play one Pokemon game, you play them all, really. Um, not if you're talking about Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, Pokemon Pinball, the core, the core series. Okay. Nothing will compare to Pokemon Snap. Let's be fair. Um, plenty Pokemon of things Snap. compared to Pokemon Snap. Tried to get Henry into the show. Pokemon Snap is horrible. Fuck you. <laughs> okay, number three. <laughs> Legend of Zelda. Uh, Oracle of Ages. He's Skyward Sword. <laughs> uh, Breath of the Wild. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Skyward Sword. Uh, Breath of the Wild. This was my first Zelda I've ever played, and I had wow. so much fun in this world. I'm excited to try some other Zelda games. All right. First and foremost. They're going to be very different. They're going to be very different. <laughs> yeah. You started with something that's like, you may have like set yourself up for disappointment. He by basically starting with started the with the exact opposite of The Legend of Zelda 2. What we can tell you, and we've talked about this a lot, what we can tell you is that while Breath of the Wild is amazing in certain respects, one thing it doesn't do great at is maybe the dungeons. So if you like the dungeons in Breath of the Wild, woo, there's some good ones out there that you'll love. But you've dropped yourself into the Louvre of video games, and you started at the Mona Lisa. Yes, and now you're gonna have to work your way back a little bit. There, yeah, I mean, maybe the creation of man. We're I don't talking about go Mona Lisa. I think we're specifically here referring to like the world structure and the way everything works together is fucking incredible. Well, then you unmatched. picked like one of the fucking smallest paintings in the world. It's like that fucking big. Is it really that big? Yes, that small. I mean, the Mona, Mona Lisa's fucking tiny. I thought oh, it really. Yes, I did, I did not. Have know none of you seen the Mona either. Lisa? No, I no, have. I've never it's been. very small, bitch. I've never been to Europe. We should go to Europe. We four player road trip. <laughs> four player road trip. <laughs> road good. trip. Yeah, this can be a tough road trip. <laughs> <laughs> we can make it. Uh, number two, and I I like this choice. Red Dead Redemption Two. Yeah, nice. Uh, Sadie may be my favorite video game character ever, and Arthur is right behind her. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I just said, I'm a I'm mature. Uh, I loved everything about this game except having to slowly walk around in the camps. That is the everybody worst likes to part bring, about everybody that Everybody likes to bring that up. Nick talk. loved how Come slow they made him walk the in the camps. Walk. In fact, Nick told me, he pulled me aside one day and he said, if they let me run through camp, I would like this game less. I did. I did say that. You did not. Say I just that. think it's. I just think people no dwell. one would say that. I think Nick. people dwell on these things maybe a little too much. I think. I think that game does so many amazing things, and that was just one another way of like keeping you so, firmly so, planted in the experience they were so, trying to shape for you. So Jeff, a.k.a. Quality Beats, tweeted the other day, and I kind of stopped myself from applying to him. It's probably a good idea. Uh, and Because he was talking, like, how he's like, hey, you remember Red Dead Redemption 2? Me neither. Uh, like that, so, is, that is... That is and, and I was... Yeah, he, I, he, really I feel like... Re- I've never even seen the tweet, and I'm feeling like replying. I really wanted to say something, because, like, honestly, I've been thinking about replaying Red Dead Redemption Me too. 2, because that's Me a really too. fucking good game. <sighs> and it, I was, like, very mad. That was you? Was 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 he, like, just mocking you, Carlos? Or was that you that tweeted that? Oh, it... He I thought it was tweet. Jeff. Maybe he stole the tweet. Yeah. Oh, well, if it was Carlos, he I'm does less. Do that. If it was Carlos, I'm less angry because Carlos doesn't mean any of that stuff. Uh, okay. That was it might have been Carlos game of the year last year. Who cares about Carlos? No, that's right. It, it was Carlos's game of the year last year. Right. That's funny. This is one of those in jokes that people. And I like how Carlos has the tweet ready to go. <laughs> but you know, Carlos is also one of those people who likes to take tweets from other people and use them as though it was his own. Um, and his number one game of all time is Horizon Zero Dawn. Wow. Yeah, so it's a modern choice. game. There's really nothing better than killing robo-dinosaurs with a fancy bow and arrow. That's all he says about it. I mean, that's that was a fantastic fucking game. That was uh, unique, and that was a fantastic new IP. I hope to see a sequel to that someday. Oh, you know they fucking will. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm sure they're already balls deep in working on that. I mean, how could that not be like a launch game for the next generation? 
I want. You know what? I want to know his favorite sports game of all time. He uh, hot, he hid that information from us. Lionheart, feel he free. He was to, a big sporto. Is it NHL ninety four? I bet it's NHL. Lionheart, 94. if you hear this, feel well, free to comment on this week's. Hockey. If you what? want to tell Brad what well, your favorite sports no. game is, leave a comment on fourplayernetwork.com. Lastly, I want to say I want to read his. Well, we ask, what is a game that you consider to be underrated that you wish more people would play, and why? And you know what he said? Mm-hmm. Fail Steel Arbiter's gone. Mark. Wow. I was turned off by all the negative reviews, but I tried it out anyways after Nick talked about how he, how he Nick, likes it. And this sure game this has been a you? blast. It, was, was this really Nick? No. This Nick, is was this your dad? This is Lionheart. Did he win you supporter do love spotlight? Sadie yeah. a lot. I do like Sadie a lot. For sure. Oh my god. I'm just saying. I'm getting a lot of I'm getting a lot of support here from the community. I really appreciate it. Days Gone is dope as shit. Good choice. Good fucking choice. There are dozens of us. <laughs> so it's big wazoo. Um Anyways, thank you again, Lionheart. We appreciate it. Again, if you would like to fill out uh, the questionnaire yourself so we can read some of your responses, just head on over to discord.gg slash floorplayer if you're a supporter on Twitch or Patreon. Uh, and you can find you can access the supporter spotlight channel. Uh, and there's a pinned message in there with a link. Just the, click that link and fill it out. The, Nick, the reason I thought it was Jeff was because that was Carlos who tweeted that, and Jeff replied saying, nah, nothing memorable about that ship. That shit set the glitches, bro. Is what Jeff Damn. said. Okay, so that is classic st- Jeff tweet. Mm. What was it? What was the one game that he hated? Jeff. Oh, Hollow. Wait, was it Hollow Knight? Hollow Knight. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, "This shit's too easy." Is that? And I finished it in like eight hours. Some crazy shit like that. Oh my god. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Uh, and, and now he doesn't listen to this. Show. Let's answer some questions from our supporters. Hey Nick, Days Gone or Alan Wake? Which one's the better game? You'll have to wait and find out, bitch. What? They can't both be on a list this year. What do year. you think the answer to that question is? Alan Wake. Hey, man. Why are you grilling me? Singularity. <laughs> so the real question is, what are we getting the top five? Days Remedy Gone or Singularity? Games? Top five what? Remedy games. I don't think I've played five Remedy games. Well, you need to Max remedy Payne. that Alan situation. Wake. I have barely, I haven't finished Quantum Max Break, Payne. Control. Uh, Alan Wake, Max Quantum Break, and Control. <laughs> it's five games. I it haven't played Max Payne games. 2, and I haven't finished Max Payne 1. I've played three Remedy games to completion. There's Top a, three Remedy they games. Made a car <laughs> game. They made a car combat game. All right. Let's, let's answer some questions from our supporters on Patreon. Uh, we got a lot of questions this week, Ooh, so okay. let's get to it. Let's do First it. question from White Fang. White Fang. Thanks for your input on my last question. And going off my question from last week, how do you decide what games you'll play next? I created a slideshow for my smart TV that displays a random cover artwork with info at the bottom, platform slash untouched, started, finish, etc. Wow. I would love to hear your methods, especially from Brad and Nolan with their love of RPGs. Hmm. Wow, that's a that, really that interesting a, way of doing it. That is interesting. Um, I mean, I... I Usually just by release date to start. I create a spreadsheet as games are announced and release dates are announced and stuff, and I that I know that I'm at least interested in playing. And then as they're so as on, they're coming on, out, on on my games I've played this year spreadsheet at the bottom, I have the section of games that are scheduled to come out this yeah. year, mm-hmm. um, and I try and keep up with that. The problem is, as of late, since I only play like four to five hours of games a week, it's mainly whatever's currently in front of me. <laughs> it's there we kinda, go. It's Whatever like a, a new it. game comes out. I'm like, mm, I'm gonna put down this old game and just pick up this new one. Yeah, I kind of do that too. And it I, sucks, but I just I don't have time to fucking spend 30 hours every game, and they come out so fucking often lately. Well, I I I, uh, I stopped playing games I really enjoy just to try to stay like. Up to speed, up, yeah, current relevant, for the yeah. podcast or whatever. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to have another episode where I'm like, yep, I'm still, still playing Judgment. I try to play whatever's new, but I like to try and keep something on the back burner that's, um, that's either old or maybe something Nick, else. I have one I burner. I know. I I'm not. Just, I'm just thinking of my own burner. personal situation, which I'm finding myself with a lot of time to play games lately. So. I like to play some. I like to play whatever's the new hotness, and I like to have at least one thing on the back burner that I'm playing periodically that's older or maybe something that came out earlier this year that i skipped you know i've been playing final fantasy 9 for like three months now just when i have time that kind of thing anybody have anything else they want to bring up quickly uh, i just try to keep my finger on the pulse you know i go it's to like reset era find out what people are talking about They'll something seems interesting to pulse. me i'll try it out 
Like fail seal arbiter's mark. There you there go. We go. Uh, next uh, question no, from one of our new uh, patrons, Mr. Scorpion. Mr. What Scorpion. series or genre of game do you feel doesn't quite get enough love these days? And what game from that genre or series would you recommend as an introduction? Strategy for... RPG. I recommend fail. Actually, Final Fantasy Kinda Tactics, right. if you've not played that. It's like still the best. Um, I feel like, doesn't I feel like there love. hasn't been a lot of great like platformers. Maybe? Maybe unless I'm forgetting some stuff. Like there, there's not the, a lot of great platformers. No, I mean like lately, like new stuff. Yeah, he's saying like, like the. New I feel like the platform. era of great new platformers. good platformers. How, how new are we talking like here? Like 3D talking or side scrolling? Sure, 3D. Like I'm, I'm thinking like the Jack and Daxters, the, uh, the fucking like a uh, ukulele style thing. Yeah, like yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah, you don't have good. Done, right? There's a reason. Time, but good. Super Mario Odyssey. Okay, like, I, I'm not saying it's completely. He li- Chris, Great. he just said there haven't been that Mario. Many good honestly, ones. I forgot about Mario Odyssey, but like that's the Mario last... Odyssey came out like over ten years ago. <laughs> <laughs> you mean that came out when we first started doing this podcast? Yeah. Yes, dude. Uh, honestly, it's been a while. I mean, I'm just saying. Oh like, seven, I think. Like there hasn't been. There's been a lot of Mario games, but a lot, I've skipped a lot of them because they're just not the same Galaxy. kind of thing. Oh wait, what did what did you I say? Odyssey. Odyssey? Oh, I thought you said Galaxy. Oh, you were serious. <laughs> Sorry, that Odyssey. No, nah, fuck was, Odyssey. That was like, yeah, that might have been like 07. Yeah, Galaxy was 07. I thought you were talking. Yeah, about it was that year. I'm just saying there hasn't been a ton of great like the era. Of no, the, I of agree great, with Nick. Like, I, I would love more high quality like Mario Odyssey quality. Yeah, I'd like to see it from Sony. So there was a time where Sony was putting out like Jacket Axer and Sly Cooper mm-hmm. and Ratchet and Clank and all that stuff. It was all kind of dope. I have the Sly Cooper collection. That's something on my back burner for so. I want to play a good platformer right now, man. I've never touched the first Sly Cooper. Cooper's a really good platformer. I yeah, know. No, yeah, that's a good point. Maybe I'll play that soon. I, you just gave me the random. Just by that's fucking it. random. Fuck it. Fuck All it. Right, we got to move on. We have a lot more questions. Spyro. That's how I pick games that I want to play. More questions. Uh, next one from Question Mork. Uh, favorite pure evil villain. I'm a huge fan of Palpatine and. Yoshi Kage Kira. So I'm guessing the distinction he's trying to make is villains who are just evil for the sake of being evil. Who I guess don't, so. Kefka that, that you're not supposed to like. Uh, Kefka. Empathize, empath- empathize yeah. with. Um, no empathy for Kefka. I don't know what that means. Is Final Fantasy VI. I tried. Kefka. I saw this question come through, and mm. I was trying to think of villains, but like every single one I thought of was like sympathetic in some way. Mm. Uh, you know what? Who is it? Kefka. I mean, Emperor Palpatine's a good choice. Yeah. Uh, is he? Are y'all excited about him being in the new one? Agent Smith? Is that know. the Pope? Wait. From Assassin's Creed? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Agent Smith. In Assassin's, Assassin's Creed, you have to fight the Pope. You do. Yeah, man, you, not only that, you fist fight the, the Pope. Yeah. The Pope is pure evil. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm pretty sure the fact that he's the Pope makes him somewhat sympathetic. I really uh, like, I really like I don't know, that's debatable. I think she's really good. Oh yeah, but but she's but she's sympathetic. She has a reason for being the way she is uh, to to a, a limited degree. I mean, I couldn't honestly tell you what that reason was, but I'm just, like we're talking about characters that are that are literally just evil for no other reason than like that's just the way they are. What about King Bohan from Heavenly Sword? Deep cut, huh? Sure, that, uh, sure, that's a a- Andy Circus man. He I'm gonna good. I'm gonna go with Agent he Smith. He was good. Agent is he evil? He's like a pro. Agent Smith was right? was is like the definition of like evil for the sake of being evil. He was designed to be evil. I mean, I, I, I don't know. Maybe, I really I, I the design maybe, maybe, really maybe to be evil is not the I way really, to put it. He I serves was... a very specific purpose, but he doesn't have any. He doesn't empathize. He doesn't like falter from his mission. You know what I'm saying? Like he is the bad guy, mm-hmm. but he has no moral. moral Kefka was code. basically the Joker. I, I really like the Reaper <gasps> from Mass Effect. Okay. Oh. Is the so, qu- serious question? Is the, is Heath Ledger's Joker in the Dark Knight? Yes. Sympathetic? No. No. He's evil for being evil, right? Yes. He's a pure yeah. evil Chaotic character. Evil. Yeah. All right, then. Yeah, I'm gonna go with. Are we talking I'm gonna about go video with the games? Cool. Ta- in general, he, he, he's an oh. Emperor Palpatine. Oh. I mean, I guess he's been in some games. I mean, but... they, they did to attempt to develop a Dark Knight video game. Oh, stop it, y'all. Yeah, shut up. I'm gonna go uh, I'm gonna go with Heath Ledger's joke. Next question from Zero Skies. At which uh at which type of service do you stop tipping? A place that serves you food, a place that you sit in but pick up uh and clean up your own food, a place that you pick up and go, a place that serves fast food. 
Slow he's he's naming a bunch of different types of if which the, if a waiter is not bringing you food or serving you food or refilling your drinks, I don't like if you buy food from a counter, go sit down, eat it, put away your shit. I, who do you even tip? Don't tip there, right? If they put it, if there's a, if the only way to tip someone is through a tip jar at the counter, and then you never see that person again face to face, I usually. Well, yeah, that's that. These places get fucking sneaky, and they then when they give you your receipt, there's like a tip line on there. Yeah, I know. Like, yeah. Oh, just I'm not bullied by a tip line. Yeah, neither am I. I, I sometimes fall for it, but like it's 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 in situations, you know. I'm trying to think of you're this. paying for the food that's the transaction give them the money they give you the food don't thank don't, you don't get me wrong i sometimes feel a little bit like steve Bashimi, like mr pink i tip don't get me wrong. i do tip when i feel it's deserved i just get frustrated when i'm at like a restaurant and like it's like the concept of oh this person went back to the kitchen and they picked up a steak and they brought it and they set it down where this person went back to the kitchen and they picked up a salad and they brought it and they put it down. One of those I'm supposed to tip like ten dollars, <laughs> and one of those I'm supposed to tip two dollars. Yeah, yeah, what? Up. Yeah. Like, I, I don't get me wrong. I tip. I generally do like twenty percent unless it's bad service. Uh, if it's really good service, I'll go like twenty five. But I think tipping is fucking stupid. I think we should have like value. Like tipping should not be based on the value of the food. It should be based on the service. So like, oh, I'm going pay- to give you five dollars or i'm going to give you ten dollars yeah. like regardless of the price of the food yeah. that's fucking stupid or maybe we should just it should be based on maybe like how many people in a perfect world yeah. we should just pay well correct service we, we, yeah industry people there, uh, living actually, wage there's a high place in south austin that that's their thing but like we, we're border we're bordering on like political discussion at yes, this point are. but like I'm of the opinion that it, I, the world I would, it would just be nicer if we could just pay them a living wage and they didn't no, feel like they had to like slit people's throats to, like get you know, yeah. better tips and if they slit my throat, they're not gonna not- tip. <laughs> but <laughs> that being yours. said, I think all of us, for the most part, here are on the same page that it has to be a restaurant where there's someone who is actually waiting on me, someone who is doing something. Who I've gone to like a fast, I've gone to like a fast food restaurant. I feel like I've gone to like a water burger and it was You've like been a tip. Duped. It was like a tip thing. I'm like, what? Wage in Australia is like twenty one dollars, which is which is why you shouldn't let them bitch about how much their consoles cost. Sorry. Anyways. All right. Anyway, next question from Skid. Uh, 1999 month. When? And yes, I know it's fucking September going into... Oh, fuck, it's October. Uh, that would be when we hit... A, what was it? 175,000 patrons. Patrons, patrons Brad? Yeah. I should, I should make that official and just put it on the, on the goal should. sheet. You right. should! It's official. Boom. I, but is it going to be 99 month? No, not necessarily. Because we, we skipped 97. Yeah, we did I mean, 96 and 98. Do, if we do... You know, if we do it next year, 20 years is 2000. Yeah, 2000. Mm-hmm. What about 2000? 2000. All right. Parasite yeah. 2 was in 2000. The point is, I think people uh, like those months. So, yes, we'll do another one. Moving on. 2001 is a much better year than 2000. Shut up, Mr. Green Toast. Yeah, With the recent up, announcement of Deadly Premonition getting a sequel, what other cult classic games do you expect to see get unexpected sequel within the next few years? None. Cult classic? Like, like Nier got a... Yeah, sequel. N- I bet you anything we'll see get a near Automata sequel. But oh, at probably. this point, but Nier, I don't think that's Nier cult was, classic anymore. But near was the the cult yeah. one, I guess. Mm. Classic, classic. Oh goodness! Good question. You know, we haven't. Got I think it's original... time for Turok to make a comeback. That's not cold. I think we're Those gonna see popular. a Jet Force Gemini sequel. You're full of shit. <laughs> You're full of shit. <laughs> Uh, a Shadow of Rome sequel. Ooh, that's yeah. good. Yeah. We'll never see that. I can picture Nintendo doing a Switch uh, thing of uh, Rhythm Heaven. Well, Rhythm yeah. Tandoku, that game? Yeah. yeah. Uh, There's been a, a bunch of those. Though. I didn't say they're not popular. They're not really culty. I think we're going to get a they sequel agree. to Singularity. No, we're not. I love how dreams are born and die in the same sentence in this question. Yeah. Um, yeah kind of. Beyond Good and Evil, we might get a sequel to that someday. Uh, laughable. <laughs> you know, it's so fucking funny that when they first showed that, I'm like, this is a fucking joke. And y'all are like, you just being a pessimist, dumb bitch. Just wait and see. We've waited so long, and it is still a joke. So fuck all y'all. Next question. <laughs> Next question from Ash. Despite the April Fool's tease, Yakuza 7 being turn, uh, turn-based really surprised me. It got me thinking, are there any franchises you imagine would be improved by making the same change? Mm. 
to a to a turn from a brawler from to whatever, whatever to turn based. Anything yeah, to anything turn-based. to turn based. Oh man, I don't know. I'm not the hugest fan of turn based stuff anymore. I don't know if I want to see that happen. Um, I how, would. How about a turn based Resident Evil? That's what I was just about to say. I Damn. would rather not. I would rather just have a that regular could be really something new. Though. Something new. Sure, but like. I feel like that's the kind of thing you would you do to mix something up when it's getting stale, and I'm like, okay. at, I'm at like peak Resident okay. Evil love right now. So like, I don't really, I'm not ready for it to, to be shaken. Well, let's not fall into the trap that they always have and get stale again by doing the same shit over and over. But I guess they haven't been whatever. I mean, they, they did Resident Evil Seven directly followed by one of the best remakes they've ever done. Like, come on. And what do they do next? Another seven? Sure, but like, do so, like turn uh, base it. Mix that shit up. Make it fucking like a totally unique setting and everything. I don't know. Turn-based Doom. They've done that, actually. Doom Turn RPG. one based and two. Cooking great Mama. Um, also, Cleft mentioned Dino Crisis as a possible cult sequel mm. coming up. That's a possibility, maybe. How about you take a, like a, like Final Fantasy twelve, and then turn-base it, but maybe you put it on a grid? Like mm-hmm. a like with a bunch of squares. You f- mm-hmm. Fuck, fuck you know? off. Like mm-hmm. top you mean down like Final view. Fantasy Tactics, Brad? Is that the joke you're trying yeah, to make? Maybe kind of like that game. Kind of like that game. Mm, weirdo. Yeah, that game All right, guys, we anyway. still have a lot more. Questions. All right, keep 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 them coming. The next one from Villasaurus. Has a video game ever been cathartic or inspiring for you? As someone who is in education, who isn't in a, and who is in a education major, yeah. uh, I've been loving. Uh, Oh, Fire Emblem uh, Three Houses. I was like, oh, you abbreviated H. Yeah. Uh, Since it fulfills my fantasy of being a professor in a small classroom environment where I can personalize my students' education. Mm. And yes, I did have a moral crisis on ethics of dating my students or how Soma related to a lot on of my technology classes uh, by bringing up questions like, quote, what's the difference between AI and a human or the whole ethical dilemma of shutting down the WAU? or allowing it to continue its rather unethical experiments for the continued existence of of mankind. I know Nolan has talked about human resource machine and how it's essentially just an extension of his work skills or how Chris Davis loves playing the division to satisfy his lust for murder. (laughs) Can we go back a little bit? He's a, he's a teacher, professor? Yes, he, 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 well, he is someone... Hold on. Students is, from other classes and fucked them? He is someone who is in an education major. Oh, okay. He's okay. trying to be a teacher. But Brad. Yes. He struggled with it. Yeah, okay. he, struggled he struggled with that with decision. It. Long as it was a struggle. And hey, also, if you're like in college, if you're like teaching college students of no. legal age, <laughs> I still don't think that's okay. Um, the power dynamic. Papers, please, is a pretty good example of a uh, cathartic game for me. That's a good one. Also, mm-hmm. uh, what he mentioned in re- reference to Nolan, but I didn't play the original one. I played the sequel, and now I'm, the name is escaping me on the Switch. Seven uh, million humans. Se- seven billion. Seven. Billion. Billion. billion yeah. Seven billion humans was a really cool uh, exercise in like futility. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, but also like teaching like just very basic concepts of like programming and stuff and like, yeah. getting your mind to kind of work that way. Uh, which I don't do a lot of at work, but like it's still kind of cool to like branch out and learn new skills that are like lo- loosely related to what I do. So that was cool. Um, and there's another one I was, I was thinking about. What the fuck was it? Anybody else have an answer? Good to know, um, I mean, it got a lot more complicated. The early part of that question was anything that's... Um, cathartic or inspiring. Cathar- cathar- cathartic or inspiring? Mm-hmm. I wouldn't say I've ever been directly inspired by... Really? Maybe, I mean, maybe I'm just not thinking of it right. You weren't inspired by Red Dead? You didn't want to go out and buy some assless chaps? <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> I definitely... I, I did consider maybe getting a cowboy hat. Oh, there you go. Really? Well, I'm ten gallon hats. No, so a friend of mine lent me, lent me his cowboy hat. So when on, when I streamed it on launch day, I had yeah. the cowboy hat and the uh, what you call it bandana. Did you, did you feel like I could go to Walmart? I was this. like, I was like, oh shit, I, I kind of like this. I, I could wore, just go to Walmart. I wore it all day, and I was like, maybe I like cowboy hats. I was like, Ron, what if I got a cowboy hat? And she was like, No, I'm in Texas. <laughs> inspiring. Ca- cathartic. No, I, cathartic no. is very different than inspiring. So it's like. I don't, I don't really know how to answer that. Scott, I'm sorry if I sent you off on like a tangent about the logistics and legalities of teachers having relationships with their students, even in college. I was making a joke. 
Um, I don't think it's correct. Unless yes, they're really we, hot. These were, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yes, these are all jokes. Yeah. Uh, Dude, that, that is one of I like my... how he says, it's drilled into us from day... Interesting choice of words. It's drilled into us from day one that it is never okay to fuck a student. Is that how they worded it? I hope that's not how they worded it. Uh, but that always makes me think of the episode of South Park where uh, Ike, Ike is a... Uh, uh, Kyle's uh, little brother, yes, the yeah. elementary school student, and he's having a relationship with his teacher. Oh God! Uh, if you haven't seen that clip, sometimes I, I'm shocked. At the, Hold on, the all right. I'm going really to bring up that clip after the show for context. For context, okay. but it is hilarious. All right. Um, uh, chat already knows what's going on. Persuade knows. Laid knows. Nice. Uh, <laughs> all right, moving on. Uh, <laughs> what the fuck is going on? Next question from Alexander. Uh, that's another oh god oh god tldr it's, it's, it, people um uh, does he have a tldr at the end um what do you think <laughs> <laughs> well let me tell you about it okay all right everyone get cozy pull up a blanket some hot cocoa <sighs> i would like to critique from you guys for an opinion i have i would like a i would like Critique, I guess. I would like uh, I a critique. I love RPG games. In particular, I like having a customized character that's unique and has the pros and cons to other characters you might create. But there is one thing I hate about RPGs. I hate leveling up. I don't mind it in the single-player story-driven games like Fallout or Dragon Age, but I hate it in co-op multiplayer games like Borderlands or pretty much any MMORPG. I feel like I'm wasting my time on those games because any equipment I get at lower levels become obsolete in higher levels, so really the only enjoyment you get at that point is from the gameplay. The new Borderlands that is coming up is going to have a level scaling, so I just wonder what's the point of having level system at all? Why not have no leveling and instead make everyone the same level? Uh, of course make some enemies tougher than others and make challenging areas but instead of making the game artificially harder by giving the enemies more health just because they happen to have a higher level to make the make the game actually challenging through just just purely from gameplay an example would be the doom series of games those games have no leveling system just upgrades in the new doom but people can play them for hundreds of hours and enjoy it if there was a game like Borderlands where maybe you had less weapons but not 90% of them but not 90% of them would become obsolete eventually and had more defined gameplay that didn't have a cheap way to make the game harder but genuine challenges like the Doom series. I would play the hell out of that game. What do you think? It's uh, called a shooter. Yeah. I mean, play well, Halo. So, so I, I will I will say I agree with you there. That was actually one of my my biggest frustrations with when I started playing like Borderlands Two, is when it kind of got monotonous for me. But the, but the, was the fact scale, that I was isn't that, isn't that specifically for when you're playing with other players so that you're not limited to who you can play with? Yes and no. But I think one of the things he was referencing was the fact that I would find a weapon and in 35 seconds that weapon would become obsolete. Yeah. And it became this game of me just constantly picking up and putting down weapons. Like I did, I probably picked up and put down more Which weapons than bullet, bullet point shot. For a, like a selling point for the game, and it's yes. kind of like, oh my god, come on. Like, it should be the point where you can pick up a gun, and if you like a gun enough, you can, like, stick with it and upgrade it over the course. I almost feel like the leveling system should be tied to the guns and not necessarily the character. But then again, mm -hmm. they're also... The levels system applies to, like, enemies and stuff. Mm -hmm. But in that situation, enemy, enemies have levels to keep you to, like, artificially kind of, like, bar off certain areas. Correct, so you can't, yeah. like, go... You but what, but you know. what he's saying is, is why can't you just not have levels and just have, hey, there's an enemy over here that is more... Actually, that's sorry, that's not even what he's saying. He's saying he doesn't like that style of gameplay. He prefers more where there's no levels and it's just the gameplay is well designed enough that yeah. it kind of and, takes you in areas. And, I mean, and honestly, what he's describing is the difference between an RPG and a shooter. Kind of, and, yes. You know, yeah. Borderlands is... Might I recommend Half-Life? And Borderlands is definitely Quake. leaning more Those towards trying to be games. an RPG. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, no. I. I. I got. I get the point. And I. I like both styles of games. I, I do like our. You know. Sometimes leveling up can be fun. It's. It is nice to have that. You know. That ding. That oh, I got a new level. It's, I get it's some a very, new benefits it's a numerical from it. Way of like it's. It's a numerical representation of your progress, which is nice. Oh, but yeah, that, I think maybe Bombardier. Bom, 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 yeah. Bombardier is the kind of one of the another points he made. Is what's the point of leveling if everything scales at your level? I mean. That's a good question. And there is some it's games like, definitely it's do like that Skyrim. Wrong. I mean, I'll be honest. It's I don't like know. how Skyrim, like you don't really like everything. Kind of yeah. like sorry, I guess Skyrim. I don't, 
It doesn't do it that uh, way. Oblivion. Oblivion is yeah. more like, yeah, like Oblivion. So, like, some games do it poorly, and I think Oblivion is an example of that, and some games do it well. Uh, I don't remember. So, like, I'm playing Fail Seal Arbiter's Mark. Have you oh, heard are me? are you playing that? Uh, so, like, enemies do kind of scale up with you, right? But you're getting, as you level up and you're creating, unlocking new classes, you're getting more tools to work with, right? So, the challenge can get harder, but now you have more ways to, like, navigate a challenge, mm-hmm. even though, you know, the enemy's kind of keeping up with you, right? Mm-hmm. So, it, like, it keeps it interesting. And it's also a way of preventing any specific parts of the world from becoming less fun to play in. Like, if enemies continue to get stronger with you, you're not you're never really in danger of, like, going back to an area and then just, like, one-shotting all these enemies, which ends up becoming really boring. Like well, like that's what Oblivion thought. But they did it wrong. Yeah. I mean, it could also be very satisfying to run through an area that gave yeah. you a hard time before and just waylay yeah, everything. Yeah, I mean, it, it's 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 a it's definitely like an a, East game or something. It's definitely a, a, a you know up for debate, and it's a you know like it's, like I said, some games do it well, some games don't do it. Well. I don't mm. even remember how Borderlands or Borderlands Three is supposed to work in that regard. I don't know. Uh, in fact, this will be my first Borderlands game I've played since basically the original. So. You ever uh, played Tales from the Borderlands? No, never played. Nick, what the fuck is wrong with you? I'm a monster. God. You're horrible. God. You're kicked off this podcast. God. You should play that with Robin. Before Borderlands 3. Like you right and Robin now. need Robin to sit down and play that. Has not played it either? No. Doesn't sit she like down, Borderlands? Play it together. Y'all make the decisions. Doesn't she like Borderlands? That's a great yeah, way she to loves get. Dude, me and Bernadette played that game together. I gave her the controller. I it is a do it. great lead up to Borderlands. Is yes. it available to play, though? Yes. yes. Well, Can you actually buy it? Yes. Uh, uh, they took down all of... Really? They took down, like, everything. All of Telltale shit. Well, you can find a way. Discs? Life, yeah, there's discs. There's, there's discs. discs out there. Dude. Like, Are you Minecraft, sure there's discs? And it's not just like you buy a c- cartridge and it comes with a download. Pirate code. Bay, motherfucker. Listen. Yeah, at if that they point. take it, if there's no legal way to obtain it, you steal the motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> steal that wow. shit. Tell us how you really I feel. I mean, what else are you supposed to do? Yeah. I know. I get what it. What else are you it. supposed to do? I, I get eBay? it. We'll see what happens. I'll, I will try and. Hey, man. I, I some, like, like, Robin loved the shit out of Until Dawn. And I was like, oh. There's like a co-op mode, Man of Medan. We could play it together. And she's like, eh. damn, <laughs> Man of Medan, Man, Man of Medan. <laughs> hey, Black Betty, dude, you if you can't sell her on Tales from the Borderlands, I don't know. Strangely what to tell enough, you. I told her about like I told her about telling lies and like passing, mm-hmm. and I was like, you don't play Man of Medan? She's like, she's like, no, nah, I don't think so. And I was like, she's like, but that other game. I was like, what other game? She's like, that one with the videos. And I was like, I told you that about I told you about that like two weeks ago, and it was like. All of five seconds, and you want to play that one? Okay, it's so, cool. like that's the that's the one I've made the most progress on. Well, All right, moving cool. on. Next question from Don Dolan. Don Dolan, would you rather have arms that are so long they yes. would drag on the floor? Yes. Now we're getting to the good question. Or legs so long you would hit your head on the ceiling of most buildings if you stood at your full height? Oh God, no! Arms. I think arms. You at just that bend point. the arm. As, so, as someone who is shorter, I feel like well, I would you take could just the bend one. the legs too. No. What? <laughs> Walk around like as, this. As someone yeah, who has never had, the arms. as someone who has never had to duck through a doorway, I think uh-huh. I'd take option two. Sitting at a desk, though. You want to duck through doorways? Like, I don't know. If, what? If you're like sitting at a computer, feel tall. you don't want the. How do you arms. sit at the computer? <laughs> like you're like <laughs> yeah, you're fifteen feet like like away from the back. desk. Your, t- your monitor has to be that big. All right. Here's an important question: Do your arms have bones? Well, what? Yeah, their arms. They have to have. The fuck are they are like, you talking about? Are they like stretch no, arms? The real question, Nick, is or... how many joints do you have? Do you have one elbow, or do you? Oh, have like... ah! oh, <laughs> God, <it's>... Wait, <laughs> if you have a, an extra set of elbows, then that, that just makes oh, it easier. You yeah, just roll you your arms up. up. Oh yeah. shit, Gamer Beck has a good point. How What's do up? you jerk off if you have the long? <laughs> you, what are you your arms are different bend. ways. Yeah, you just like have to like stretch your arm across the room, like. You just keep curling around yeah, well, until you get saying. there. If you have like four elbows, you do, 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 you're back <laughs> when you started. I don't be honest. That shit creeps me out. I feel like you've become like a weird like slender man monster. At this <laughs> no, point. like like it reminds me of Beetlejuice. Yeah, when Beetlejuice rolls his yeah, arms out. Yeah, uh-huh. like that. Or yeah. the fucking clown from Poltergeist. Yeah, yeah who wants this? That's me, cool. I Let's guess. do that. Or just if you don't have any bones in your arms, you can just like wrap it around things uh, apparently we do have bones i was I, everyone looked at me like i was crazy there are definitely bones yeah, you gotta have bones also yeah. vagina it'd hard, bones it'd be hard to get a job <laughs> vagina bones yes vagina <laughs> you've you seen that you seen yes, that tweet that was so oh dumb. censorship they removed her vagina bones <laughs> 
<laughs> all right. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. Uh, that's all the questions from our patrons, but we do have some questions from our supporters on Twitch. And I think there's another juicy one in there. First question this week. Do you eat a dead body? From who? Wait, from uh, who? Sorry, from Thorax. Okay. Do you eat a dead body? Wait, sorry. Frame this one as this. Would you rather? Would you rather eat a dead body and no one knows about it? Or do you not eat the dead body, but everyone thinks you did? Oh. <laughs> I love how we finally got back to cannibalism on the podcast. Yeah, I mean, it's been a few I mean, months. so the question is, well, probably, hold on, what, what's the situation I'm in? Am I in a situation where, like, I have to eat or I'm going to die? Just say, or if it's just... No, it's, no but, you, but you have to pick one of the It's like other. a saw scenario where I'm in a room and a guy's like, you eat that body or I'm going to tell everyone you did. But, like, the person's already <laughs> yes, dead, right? exactly. They're already freshly dead? Do I have, like... fresh, yes. Do I have some salt and pepper? Do I have a cooktop? <laughs> do, do I, I gotta eat just, everything? Do I got a raw dog? Do I have it? to eat their teeth? <laughs> Oh no! I mean, uh, I'm just eating the meat off the bone. I mean, like, like a nice bicep. Think of it this way: if you actually eat the body, at least season the meat. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Do I get do I get some salt and pepper? If you eat the body, right? There's Uh no way you can eat the body down to the there's no nothing left. So how would you be hiding the fact that you ate the body? You would leave a skeleton at the least. That's that's not important. The point is, no one's ever going to. You have to eat the vagina bone. (laughs) I mean, I bet it's I bet it's a lot of meat. Like it might. It's probably a lot of meat. It'd be too much meat to eat. It'd be like it'd be like going to Fogo. Can I choose the you chef? Get the meat no. <laughs> Can I choose the chef to prepare it? Like if I could, choose... I think you're the chef, Brad. Well, then no, I'm not eating the body. <laughs> I'd be eating body sandwiches for weeks. <laughs> you don't want to make like a nice body stew? No, <laughs> like I like how full soon as he found out he was the one preparing the meat. He's like, yeah, no, I'm not eating that. The question is, do you pay the waiter? Do you tip? So them? here's a question, like. If, if if everybody thinks that you Wouldn't ate the, the body, the be do, the killer? if everybody thinks you ate the body, uh-huh. do the typical rules apply? Like, I feel, does the rule of law apply? Like, if everybody thought I ate a body, yeah. there would be legal consequences. Probably. Do those apply here? Or is it just like, dude, everyone thinks you ate a body and that's gross. Dude, so like, if they, like, you ate that body, be like, just check my poop, dog. Just check my poop. There's no <laughs> body in there. I'll just deny it. I'm like, that's ridiculous. I'm going to eat a body. Yeah. But here's a question. If ever... you think I ate the body, where's the body? Prove it. I think the implication is that mm. you would have a hard time getting, you know, you're married. Maybe you don't if have to worry about it. If the rib don't fit, you mm. must acquit. I mean, like, you know, if you, you know, if you're still, out, you know, if you're out there playing the field, I feel like it'd be a hard time securing a date if they all thought that you ate a body. Well, you don't go around telling people I ate a body. But <laughs> the point is, everybody will think you did. You like, don't go around telling people I didn't eat that body. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> That's not how you open. Wait it. a minute. If everyone thought you ate a body, you probably just be in prison. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Uh, yeah. That sucks. But to lie on your Tinder profile, I didn't eat the body. <laughs> <laughs> like. Oh Here's God. an important question. Do I get to choose the body? <laughs> no. You get meatloaf. No. <laughs> Actually, no, I apologize. It wouldn't be on Tinder. It'd be on Grinder. Oh, I see what you did there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's pretty good. I'd rather everybody thought I ate a body than eat broccoli. <laughs> what? <laughs> really? You don't like funny? broccoli? Damn, that's that's fucked up. You Brad. don't like broccoli? No, I don't like broccoli. I like really? Broccoli. I love broccoli. Oh, that's great. I mean, that's great. All like, right. Like, you could also use it to your advantage. Like, bro, I eat that body. What are you going to do? I, th- I think it's great you like broccoli. Just like, just because I want to curb stomp a me doesn't mean you can't like a me. Moving on. Next question from self I think we answered that one pretty thoroughly. If you guys could go to any time period, what time period would you guys pick? 26th century. Mm. I would go back to uh, fucking uh, go back to fucking. Well, there's a lot of like issues with time travel. Correct. Well, Are we kind of writing a lot of those off? Like if you're thinking yes. about historical issues, like like oh, I'd be historically speaking, that'd be a cool place to be. But like you go back there, you're 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 also getting all you the get the baggage. plague. You're you getting, yeah, you're you getting get the all plague. the baggage that comes with that time period. The there's plague. no internets racism women don't have rights but like if i just I went back, back like, in that time a year like no one would probably <laughs> notice Bling Lord, right? i go back to when america was great if i just went back so like never? a year n- no one would really notice but i'd still have a lot of knowledge i'd be able to like place bets and stuff on mm-hmm. and become very there wealthy we i would go back like, what would you place bets on brad I like horses i don't fucking know sports teams so you're assuming you have some sort of almanac 
Or you just have to memorize yeah. all this shit before you go back? Like well, I would look neck. up big things, you know, big, like, uh, long shots and stuff. Brad, I'm going to based on what I know about you, I don't think you would be able to remember much. <laughs> I'd write it down. I can't take a book with me? No. The, the, the material won't last through time travel. It's Terminator rules. <laughs> Mr. You go back naked. <laughs> Mr. Scorpion says... Lottery I'd... numbers! You do lottery numbers! Mr. Scorpion says, I go back to when people didn't think I ate a bike. <laughs> <laughs> nice. There we go. What if you? I would do lottery numbers. Note? What note? Like you wrapped it in plastic and and swallowed it, and then you uh-huh. went back in time travel. That might go. work. There we it's go. It's probably easier if you put it in a balloon up your butt than putting it in plastic and eating it. That's how we got hair? How we get heroin into this? That's country how some people like... also end their lives on accident trying to get a heroin into this country. Well, that's generally when the heroin bursts in the plastic, yeah. in the, like the balloon. I don't think a piece of paper bursting out of the balloon is going to kill what if you. you get a paper cut on the inside of your Ooh. body? Okay. You are overcomplicated. You got to get some ointment on your finger and stick <laughs> it up millions. in there and rub right. it on. Just dig around? Yeah. Mega all right. Uh, next question from We Green are God totally Dan. nailing all these questions. I was only mildly interested in RGO. What? Rebel Galaxy Outlaw. Thank you. Mostly because I wasn't a fan of the ship designs. When Nolan mentioned modding the game to get Swordfish in last week, it finally sold me on the game. Have there been any games for you guys where modding completely changed your decision to play it? Mm. My answer is no. Good question. I've bought a number of games or ports on PC just for the potential of modding. Yeah, but I, I think the question, this more more of the spirit of the I think, question. I think it's more so that you a game you wouldn't have maybe yeah, picked up until there was a mod it. that made but it. But modding made it different. Like I can't say like, oh, I played Fallout uh, because there was a mod that made Fallout Three and New Vegas one game. Like that's not an answer because I'd already played both those games. I feel like this is definitely the case for me. Well, yeah, Vampire the Vampire Masquerade, Masquerade Bloodlines. Is a good one. The thing is, I wouldn't have played that game back in the day just because that's not really where I was at. Um, oh, but also, couldn't you? Oh, is it hard to play a game alone without mods? Oh, well, that's what they're saying. The point Dark is, Souls. Dark Souls. Yeah, the, the thanks first Obama Dark Souls. I played it on PC, but everyone was like, "You have to play it with the the Thanks is, Obama mod." No, this is it's like what is it called? It's like I Dark Mod or something? Uh, oh yeah, yeah well, that's I, more of a technical about. thing and stuff. Yeah. That's more making. Yeah, but I guess that, that, that is like the question made that experience like smooth as butter for me. Interesting. Um, it's a good fucking question. I I know I've definitely been there, but man, so like there are times where I picked up a PC version of the game specifically so I could have access to like console commands, which is kind of not really a mod, Ooh, but yeah, in the spirit of point. of of the question, maybe where like I am not going to play this game until I don't have to worry about like inventory limits or something you know oh, what i mean that's a good, like witcher yeah like witcher. when i played fucking witcher and i got rid of the fucking i like the yeah, weight limit witcher too. and stuff like that yeah some of that was kind of important mountain that, blade that yeah. made my life it's, it's less it's less because it's one of those things where often i talk about like in the same thing with like fallout that's a good point um like fallout can be such a fucking bitch when you're constantly having to juggle inventory and i know that's a point of the game but when you can make your weight limit like nine 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 it's like well thank god i don't have to fucking yeah. worry about mm-hmm. it anymore mm-hmm. it's not that i go around picking up every single thing i see it's just more so i don't want to have to deal with oh fuck i'm one pound over weight limit i can't fast travel or yeah. whatever like yeah. Good Skyrim, question. yeah, Skyrim's a good one. Um, Inventory. Uh, all right, next question from Green Goddamn. Uh, nope, sorry, that was the one I just read. Uh, next question from Kenton. We did get a lot of questions. Uh, people are really hyped over the story in Shadowbringer for Final Fantasy XIV, with a lot of people saying it is the best Final Fantasy story in years. What does that say about current Square Enix, in your opinions? Not They're bad. Good. Current Square good. Enix is poopy doo. They're bad. There hasn't been a good Final Fantasy in yeah, years. Yeah, the last good Final Fantasy was twelve. The last, yeah, I would say the last one that had a good story was twelve. <laughs> it's like, been a fucking while. Um, which strangely enough, it doesn't feel like it was that far off just because of the like the number, the, you know, what, what are we at? Now? Fourteen? We're talking about twelve? But like when you think about it, that was actually like how many years ago? It was a 10, while ago. Ten years ago or something. Maybe more, actually. More than twenty years ago. Yeah. Oh six. Oh six. Oh, six. Yeah. Holy shit! That was like thirteen years ago. That was two generations ago. Yeah. yeah. Jesus Christ! It's, it blows my mind. Like I am praying to God that like. Yeah, that was probably that, the last really good Final Fantasy. I believe game. that Final Fantasy fourteen Shadowbringer has a great story, but like whatever Final Fantasy sixteen is, it needs it needs something that 
that 13 and 15 didn't have. It needs it. Here's Quality. What needs Here's what you do, Square characters. Enix. Make a single-player version of, like, the individual expansions or whatever. That's what you fucking do. And, uh... That would be good. Yeah. You know how like Final Fantasy twelve kind of felt like Final Fantasy eleven, but a single player game. Yes, that's a, no, that's pretty much what it do, was. Do that with twelve. Like keep that world, keep that style. Maybe keep even the same stories. Right. Just they need to stop making these fucking Final Fantasies with these like that feel like futuristic and like have these like well, all human cast. Final you know Fantasy's I mean? kind of always had that though a little bit. Not necessarily. I mean, well, don't get me wrong. There's always been some future elements to it, but what you know, you know what they need, Brad? Hmm. Fucking fantasy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, lately I, all of the fantasy has been an oh that creature looks kind of weird, but that's fucking been it. I mean, I'm seeing guys in fucking ramen noodle cups and I'm driving a fucking Corvette <laughs> down a street. Like that doesn't feel like a Final Fantasy yeah. game. I mean, yeah. I feel like I'm wearing all leather like with my hair fucking gelled back like it there are things there are things I agree I, I miss that sort of there thing. are like, aspects you want of to talk about like Final Fantasy games that are sci-fi focused I think his mic is off sorry oh sorry. I muted him I'm just kidding I did <laughs> hold on I'm receiving while, while he's doing that let me just say like there are things about Final Fantasy 15's design that I really liked that I wanted to like that made me sure. really want to like that game just from like a, just the way the the world felt like like the, you know the music and like just the concept of it but like you said i was pulled out of it every time i realized i was driving a car that really existed every time i realized that like no, ramen the noodle car co- doesn't kill I'm- it it's just that's one kind of thing like make it like a fucking like uh, the thing is honestly it, it, square enix is a sellout lately all of their shit there's so much fucking product placement and like oh well we have to put like this car because it's actually modeled after this real life car and we have to have all this camping equipment because mm-hmm. coleman paid us and we have to have fucking ramen noodles and we have to have all this shit it's weird what are you gonna say chris davis i was gonna say if you want to look at an example of a sci-fi focused final fantasy doing fantasy right final fantasy 8 was probably the last good one you're right like yeah. I don't know what, like, all the things that I dislike about 15 were kind of done also in, in, you, you, in 8, but for whatever reason, 8 had personality you, and charm. You want to know what 8 had, Nick? I've played 8 for three hours now in this, this remaster. I've summoned a summon probably 40 times as much as I have in Final Fantasy 15. Yeah. Because you know what? When I played Final Fantasy 15, I saw three summons. Yeah. Maybe four. Who's that entire was it fucking to game. take control away from you as far as like when you can use summons like that was that was some dumb shit it's a bad choice that's that pretty dumb fucking shit. stupid sorry we're we're done let's hate on Final Fantasy 15 more I hated bo. Prompto you know Prompto was, was 13, fucking stupid bo. I I hated all of the fucking every character every single one of them there wasn't a character I liked in that game except for Cindy. I knew you were going to say that. Next question. Are there any more questions? That was actually the last one. All right. Thank you guys so much for the questions. Again, uh, we want to What about that one dude? Like, his name was like Kyle or something. And they were like, (laughs) Kyle died. (laughs) Not (laughs) Kyle. Really? Yeah. It was like some dude with like a really regular ass name. I don't remember that. All right. Because I forgot everything about that game. Reminder, guys, if you want to ask us any questions, obviously you can literally ask us anything anything uh all you have to do is supply so either subscribe to us on twitch or you can support us on patreon at you know any tier whether one dollar whatever it is uh that, and also sorry, pledging on patreon of course again brings us closer to our next goal which is uh to do a project in when we hit 150 yeah. i'll say this we got a new patron tonight while we were recording this so Ooh, we only need 11 nice. more wow it's gonna have it's happening brad we it's should reality we should probably decide which game we're gonna play oh god <laughs> Like that we, uh, we've made some good suggestions. We've though. discussed so many. For for those that don't know, that is my biggest gaming regret. What? It's fifteen. I bought the like collector's edition. Oh yeah, I feel like you would probably hate Dude, that game. It's not even fucking out here. It's in my closet. I I, I care so little about. I that I feel like game. you would hate that game less if you didn't pay how much? Three hundred dollars. Oh my god. Yeah. Wow. Fucking right. I feel like a fucking idiot. I, I think you're just mad at Was yourself. it 300? Was it like 200 something? Whatever. Yeah, couldn't have been three. However much it cost. Like $200. I don't remember how much remember it that cost. Time. It was a shit ton of money and I was super excited. I, I was so fucking hyped for that game. And it came with, oh, I had like an art book and I had this and I had like the fucking cool looking action figure. And you know what? That character turned out to be a piece of shit. Yeah. You know, <sighs> I just had a flashback at the time that when I was working at GameStop with David and Prey came out. And I got the collector's edition for like 80 bucks and we opened it up 
and I'm not even kidding. Like, it's just not a huge box. It's just a normal, like, case, but a little bit thicker, right? And you open it up, and there's, like, an art book in it and whatever. I shit you not, we spent 10 minutes trying to find the disc in the case. Wow. Mm-hmm. It, was so, it was so bad. You had to, like, take all this shit out and pull the plastic thing that holds every like all the art book stuff together you had to pull that out and then it was like on the ins it was like stuck to the inside of the tin on the back of the box and we we spent 10 minutes trying to find that shit yeah i think i think they were like it was like 250 was how much it cost that's, yes that's i only... think i think david and i made a video of it i don't <laughs> really? know if it's i don't know if it's exists anywhere anymore but holy shit that was i know this is totally unrelated well but it's I it was... marginally better or marginally worse than the the arkham city collectors Edition. we could probably have an entire podcast talking about terrible collectors editions probably maybe we should do that someday anyways let's yeah. let's let's wrap this show up with the four player minute we uh we're gonna of course do our hype sweat shame fuck you or any or, or just a bunch of hypes nick or just a bunch of hypes whatever you want uh reminder again if you uh if you're watching us live you can stick around after the show brad and i are going to do a quick podcast about devil may cry 3 to kind of wrap up our revival club on that so we'll do that directly after we finish recording but brad why don't you start us off with the four player minute my first hypes for yakuza 7 or whatever they're calling it mm-hmm. uh i'm really excited about the new direction i think i've talked a lot about this series and how it's kind of been samey and samey and i'm very glad that they're doing something new i think the new combat system looks cool. Watch that April Fool's trailer. It's awesome. I also have hype for... There's a game that's getting localized for the first time. It's a PS1 RPG called Moon. And uh, I've heard a lot of people kind of talk about it. Or not a lot of people. I've heard a handful of people talk very passionately about it. And I think I just found out today that it was like a huge influence on Toby Fox as well. Creator of Undertale. And like that's never been released in the West. And now it's coming to Switch. Fully localized that's really exciting um i'm excited uh, my another hype is for all the shovel knight news we heard recently i think the new uh, king of cards is that what it's called uh the final shovel knight campaign looks fucking great there's that sh- new shovel knight dig game that looks really cool i'm very just on a big shovel knight high i also found out that they're doing a uh, remake of the original puzzle quest challenge of the warlords I think that's coming to Switch. That was the, those first two games were really cool, so I'd be excited to play that on my Switch. So I'm high for all this stuff. My fuck you for this week goes to. There's been a lot of shit happening in the industry with like allegations of abuse and stuff. My fuck you is to all the shitty scumbags who like to prey on people when this shit happens. Yeah, these people are usually tied to a certain movement of scumbags. That love to jump at these situations. You know who you are. And it sucks because typically you don't actually really care in these situations. You just use these opportunities to be shitty. So my fuck you goes to all those people. Yep. I second oh, that. Yeah. I agree with that one. Third. Shitty people are fucking shitty. We almost talked about this in the news, but I feel like well, that's, that's really not, all that needs to be said. Oh, yeah. Let's not talk about it. You done, Brad? I'm done. Cool. My hype uh, is for Final Fantasy VIII. Um, uh, it's bringing back some really fucking good memories. Uh, I'm probably going to continue playing it. Uh, the nice thing is, is since it's not like my first time, I, I, I do like the fact that I can just, you know, throw on that, you know, that triple speed and get through it pretty quick. I can get through like, you know, the, the tedious kind of grinding parts more easily. Um, and then kind of get to the, the next story beat and stuff like that. Uh, my, uh, sweat, uh, goes to judgment. Um, I started playing it again the other day just because I was kind of looking for something to play. It was kind of, I, I was coming off of my friend Pedro and I was like, I don't want to fucking play something good. Um, and so I started playing Judgment again. And like, I don't know, it's weird. Like, I guess I just have to be in a, a mood to play Yakuza mm-hmm. games like that. What chapter? And, uh, I don't know. Or still pretty early on. Yeah, I'm still pretty early. It's just one of those things where I'm either like 100% in the game or like, I'm like 20%. And I fucking hate that, and I, I don't I, I want to get back into that hundred percent mood where I just can't put the game down, but I haven't gotten there yet. As someone who's played a majority of Judgment, I'd still haven't finished it because I sent it back. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I'm borrowing his copy uh, next week to finish it. Uh, I will say it starts very very slow, maybe more more slow than your typical Yakuza game. Okay. And, and it is paced kind of slowly, but there is a point where the story does really start Shit. to pick All up. All right, and maybe it's I, good. I need to push through it. It's good. Um, I thank you. Um, goes to steam refunds. Uh, I, I don't use them often. I definitely don't abuse them. I've done it twice, but thank God that's there just mainly cause 
I, that's one of those situations where I bought a game and I know, like, after an hour, like, I'm never going to play this. Yeah. Um, so thankfully that's there. And my fuck you is after all this conversation we just had, it goes to Square Enix. Fuck you for putting out shitty Final Fantasy games. You have the ability to put out a good one. Please do it. Cool. I also concur. Uh, Chris Davis? Uh, my first hype this week is for a game I wasn't really excited for until recently. Uh, Gears 5. Uh, I played Gears 4. It was all sorts of all right. Uh, didn't really surpass the previous three games. But, five's uh, getting good reviews. Five's getting really good reviews. And it's sounding like like it's got semi-open world elements and but exploration. The and thing like, is, what I've heard is those elements are the things that have held it back from getting like so it, it's being pretty divisive between fans yeah. about what that is mm-hmm. yeah but it looks good and i'm actually kind of interested uh we're thinking about maybe playing it this weekend yeah so me chris davis and jaeger were planning on playing it but we didn't realize that the th- it's three-player co-op but one of the players has to play as like the robot companion dude but what does the robot do he, like not he doesn't cut people in half with chainsaw guns that's mm-hmm. for sure i mean that we know of does they have lasers Drill I mean, arms? Gears of War was. What I read was that he was designed to be. He was designed for players who don't know much about shooters. Oh, it's like the girl who points from Revelations too. <laughs> or maybe, perhaps even worse, when you play the second cooperative player in Mario Galaxy and you just pick. Oh up, God! Pick up okay, I'm just kidding. That's it not may, a video. It game. may not be that bad, but you know, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna poop sock Gears Five with people, like I don't, I don't think any one of us want to spend, you know. 10 I mean, hours straight playing a game where we play as a robot, dude. Two, two-thirds of Gears 4 was all about fucking robots. So, like, I know. who knows? robots in that game? Yeah. Yeah? Dude. Yeah, you do fight a lot of robots. How do you think they're rebuilding civilization? With robots. With robots. Spoiler alert, it's robots. I played a couple hours, I got bored. My second hype is for Ace Combat 7, because they're, they're teasing new DLC for the game. Hmm. Which is actual fucking like story content, and they released a new cutscene like Shadow dropped it out of nowhere uh, last week. Nobody fucking reported it, but like there was like a because <laughs> it's, it's Ace Combat Seven. Yeah. It's, it's but it was like an interlude scene. scene, like teasing something like regarding a major event in that game, and I'm like, what the fuck is this? I still need to finish that. You really do. It's a good game. Don't worry, I'm working on it. I'm working. Uh, my sweat goes to my recent gaming habits. Uh, August was re- a really shitty month for me personally. Mm-hmm. And so instead of playing so many other things like Control or, you know, Fire Emblem or any number of good stuff that came out, I reinstalled Pub and just started playing that as comfort mm-hmm. food. Hey, you hey, know, hey. Do what you gotta do. Comfort food do is... Do what you gotta is, do. Yeah, I, just, I really wish I would... I just couldn't bring myself to, like play anything new. I just I need I need to shoot people. Whoa, whoa! It just came down <laughs> I, to that. It I mean, just came down to that in video games. We in video games. We know what you meant by that, Chris Davis. Yes. I mean, do we? Do we really? Uh, was that the end of your four? Villasaurus m- mentioned Chris Davis's bloodlust. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I was playing into that. He did. Okay. Um. Uh. And my fuck you goes to Nintendo because fuck you. It's time for Pokemon Snap two. Not gonna happen. Just fucking do it. Never gonna happen. Do it. Actually, it probably is gonna happen at some point. We we know. Why didn't they do it on the Wii U when they had the pad? That, that was, was like, the perfect opportunity. That was and they when never they did it. Should have done it. Yeah. yeah. The time has passed. It's never gonna happen. It, it's one of those things that they probably have no idea that people would be into that just for like the novelty. They, they have. They have, they have no idea. Otherwise, they would have done it. So clearly, no one at Nintendo has ever been on that thing called the internet. What? But they're I'm probably, not certain they're, Miyamoto they're ever probably has. looking at like sales of the Miyamoto original. Miyamoto doesn't run Nintendo. There are out of touch people. I mean, in, they're in, Japanese, in, Brad. Don't be rude. Look at positions. Nintendo Switch Online and tell me they're, they're not out of touch. Uh, um, they're a little out of touch. Well, but hey, it's Nintendo. We that's still... my four player minute. All right, my first hype this week is for Fear. It was picked for our new Revival Club session. Uh, I got two months. It's not a long, super long game, so I have two months to squeeze that in there and play it, and I'm pretty excited. I've only ever played Fear 2 and 3 for some weird reason. Never really played more than like 30 minutes, 45 minutes of the original Fear. I didn't really have a PC that could run it back in the day, and now I do, so I can finally play the original Fear as it was intended to be played. So I'm going to 
plan on streaming that, so sometime next week I will straight start streaming. Um, so please tune in for that. My second hype is tomorrow I'm going to the Slipknot concert. Pretty excited for that. <laughs> I bet you are. Pretty excited. Okay. Co worker going okay. to the. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we'll see each other. Uh, so He's I'm... like old. Oh, well then he probably won't be. Well, compared to you. He pr- he goes to a lot of the same shows you do, though, I think. Is he? Because it... the, the bands he talks about are the same as the ones you talk about. That's cool. I would like to meet this person. Uh, I'm also slightly nervous because I'm going to get just fucking tossed around like a rag doll. I'm fairly certain. You love it. I do love it. You I do. do love it. But like the next day, I'm usually like, I feel like a walking bruise. <laughs> So treat you know. me like shit. <laughs> I could see you in the middle of a mosh pit. Uh, yeah, yeah. You're probably not. Sorry. <laughs> What's next, Nick? Uh, my this is strange because I didn't expect this to be my a hype, but I'm gonna say it. Fucking, you said the word Sly Cooper, and it made me really excited <laughs> to play Sly, Sly Cooper. Good. I'm gonna go back. I have that that collection, the the trilogy collection. Well, I bet you yesterday. do. I'm gonna I bust bet it's that not even out. opened. No, it's opened. I just never played it. <laughs> oh, okay. So is that gonna... only on PS4? I believe uh, so. No, it's on PS. I, I have it on PS3. Do they make that collection for PS4? Y'all, y'all want to hear something? Y'all want to hear something weird? So I, yes. ca- I occasionally frequent Goodwills, right? Okay. And I look at the auctions, and I occasionally like write stuff down, right? So there was a PS4, mm-hmm. right? And it was like uh, the bid was forty five dollars, mm-hmm. and I was like, it was, but it was, it was the slim, mm-hmm. the super slim. Okay, and it came and it had a controller and everything, and I was like, okay. So the the thing about PlayStation Three is the controllers are actually like really skyrocketing. In three value. or four? Three. You said PlayStation Four. Okay, yeah. it's three. The, okay. the PlayStation Three Super Slim was forty five bucks. So I wrote my name down, and um, I was like, forty five dollars for a PS Four. And, and and the the reason the reason is because I have an original sixty gig which has like a really small hard drive and it's old, you know, sus- even susceptible to yellow eye death. I don't like want to use it because it has the hardware backwards compatibility and all that stuff. Right. You know, you can upgrade those hard drives, right? Uh, well, sure. But you know, okay. you know, it, this was $45 for a, gotcha, the gotcha. newest version gotcha. of a PS three. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> the, the, the controllers have really skyrocketed in value. Okay. There's like a huge bootleg market for those controllers, mm-hmm. and and they they're actually it's probably more expensive to buy a PS3 controller that is confirmed 100% real and in good working condition than is a PS4 controller. Mm-hmm. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bid on this. I wasn't really gonna buy it, but what happened? The craziest thing happened. Like Saturday after the auction, some dude called me. He had like country accent, like, hey dude, some shady shit's going down here. You, you better get down here, do- dude. He's like, they're trying to fuck you. They've done it to me before. I've, I've won shit, and I've seen that shit at other auctions, at other Goodwills. They're trying to fuck you, man. You need to get down here. And, like, I wasn't even going to, like, buy this thing, but I was like, for the, well, this for, is fucking interesting. For those who don't know, whenever you bid on something at Goodwill, you have to put your name and your phone number in, like, a booklet. Yeah. So, in theory, anyone could go in there. Some random like, person called me in this yeah. book, and I'm like, this is, like, a fucking mystery. <laughs> this dude, country bumpkin, called me. He's like, you better get down here, man. They're trying to fuck you. So, I come down here, and I'm like... <laughs> Just say it one more time. <laughs> I, I show up and I'm like, Where's "Who's the trying to fuck me?" I'm here to pick up my PS3, and they're like, "And then I'm talking to the employees. They're like, oh, did somebody call you?'" And like, "Yes, someone did." <laughs> and they're like, "Yeah, I won the PS3, and I only know that because this guy told me." And and, and all of a sudden. So like the woman's like, okay, let me go get it. And then there was another employee, like like kind of behind her, and she was kind of like looking around. I was like, wait a minute, I thought that, you know, that was it. So what the guy told me is, is that it's like they, I heard them. They said your number was a bad number, but I'm calling you, so I know it's a good number. And 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 she was started signaling to this other guy, another employee that works there, and, and he walks up and he's like, uh. Uh, yeah, yeah, he won the auction. He won it. It's good. It's fine. He won the auction. Did you leave with this PS3? Yeah, I did. Which I didn't even really want it, but like I was embroiled in this like <laughs> this cr- goodwill conspiracy. This <laughs> conspiracy, this scam that this a uh, th- they they 
you write down your numbers. You think you won the auction, but the shit that they want to keep, they just don't even call you. Those you, motherfuckers. Yeah, like you don't have to be present and all that stuff. Oh, and so I guess anyone running the Goodwill yeah. auction could be like, if they actually want that thing, could just be like, oh, this guy never showed up. Yeah, and if this country bumpkin didn't look at that number and randomly call me out of the blue, I wouldn't have known. Wait, was this country bumpkin like an employee or was he someone? I think no, he, was a- he wasn't an employee. Yeah. He's a dude who goes to auctions a lot. So he's a hero. Yes. He's a fucking hero. Do you, did he call on your cell phone? Yeah, he called you, my fucking cell phone. You call him back and you say thank you. Well, I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like, hey, you want to meet Call for him dr- back right now, bro. And then he's like, hey, you want to meet for drinks? Call him back live. <laughs> right now. <laughs> on the show. Do it now. So, can I finish Thanks, my four-player minute? They didn't fuck me. Go for it. I thought you were done. Go for it. My, my thank you this week goes to all the people who showed up to support me while I was playing Blair Witch because I was tense. I was fucking tense that entire game. That game surprised the shit out of me. I hope I hope some of y'all take a chance with it and play it because damn, damn, it got under my skin. But like seriously, that the last like hour of the game, it's crazy too. You go into that that last house, right? Mm-hmm. And you're like, okay, this is I'm obviously at the finale. This is the end. I'm about to go in the creepy house with the dude in the corner. That's what's gonna happen. And you go into this house, and it's like it's like it's one of those like house of leaves situations. You go in the house, and it's like much bigger on the inside than it is mm-hmm. from the outside. Mm-hmm. And it's just like I spent like an hour in this fucking house, and you're like sneaking through the dark. And, like, there's, like, weird noises and, like, things, all these hallucinations that are... It's so, like... so good. It seems scary, but that's so not Blair Witch. You know what the scariest part of Blair Witch is? It's at the beginning when they're interviewing people, and and a woman's trying to tell the story, and her little toddler in her arms is going, no, no, and trying to cover her mouth. Which is probably, like, a completely, like, accidental shot, right? Oh, man, I need to rewatch that. It's so creepy, right? It's so creepy. Yeah, I definitely need to rewatch that movie. Yeah, it's great. I mean, it's, definitely, it's, it's great yeah, fucking movie. It definitely tries to capture more of like the, the actual cinematic films and less of the <laughs> found footage things. But goddamn, it does some cool shit that I haven't seen anywhere else. I hope some of y'all try it. Anyways, I don't. I don't think. I don't think it's as good as a as the little kid from Cabin Fever doing karate and yelling pancakes. Wait, what is this? Cabin, cabin fever? fever? Are you, yeah. are you, are you cabin in the woods? No, cabin fever. Yellow pancakes? With, with yeah. Ryder Strong? Yes. Do y'all not remember that scene? No. Dude. Right, I never we saw have to, the movie. We have, to, we have to Google two things after the show. Dude, all I remember about cabin fever is that I went with a big group of people, and we got to that one part, and like... We, See, Green Toast knows what's we went up. To the, we, went, we saw that one part in that movie. You'll know what I'm talking about in a second. And We were in a big group, and yeah. it was like it was like half dudes and half ladies, and like all mm-hmm. the ladies mm-hmm. talked, and they were like... We're getting out of here. Mm-hmm. So we're like, uh, yeah. Now we're in, gonna that, be dicks like, when it like day. sloughed off. Yeah. All right. Anyway. Yeah, that so made before, everybody before, a comfortable. One second. Uh, Nick had mentioned it, so I thought I'd look real quick. We did get a patron during the show, uh-huh. River Plus A, and they actually asked a question. Oh shit! Ooh. During the show, an hour ago is when this was posted. Ooh, so okay. it was probably while I was reading questions. It's just the page hadn't refreshed. Okay. Um. So uh, River Pl- Plus A asks, uh, "You guys play a lot of games, true, and are sometimes unable to finish all of them. Very also true. true. My question is, do you have to finish a game to say you enjoyed it? I know it's kind of a gatekeeping idea, but I recently got into an argument with a friend who said they enjoyed Final Fantasy 15, but stopped playing before the game becomes linear. 15? Do you mean 13? Uh, that game is 15, bad, no, and they are wrong. No, 15 is the one that starts it's opening. Linear, oh, I guess yeah. uh, linear towards the end. Okay, he says that game is bad, and they are wrong. Well, yes, you are right. They are wrong. Final Fantasy 15 is a bad game. Um, uh, but no, I, this was a lot for me. Yeah, yeah. I don't think you have to, no. uh, and I also don't think you like you can say th- what I played of that game I enjoyed. You, you know, I will what I'm say saying? this: like, like, like obviously we like we cap the year off with our personal top ten list and whatnot. And usually when I'm looking at that list, I take the sign. I usually interpret me not finishing a game as like, well, maybe it doesn't deserve to be in my list mm-hmm. because oh, I, see, I, I never do that. Well, it's mostly because like, I mean. Depends on the I know the game. circumstances. Like well, if, like I think right that, now, if there's a game that I don't, ch- if I choose not to finish the game, it's it's not because I don't have time. Like right, like I said, I've, lately I've had a lot of time to play a game. So if I know I had time to finish it, but I didn't, I think I think it's the circumstance of of is it a a story driven game or is it b you know it depends on that kind of style. Is yeah. it something where maybe me playing more of it might change my opinion versus oh I don't care however much more I'm going to play so, of this I'm either going to like it more or like it less. Like so I can say Nolan, uh-huh. I played 
No, no, no. I will definitely finish that. Okay. I played over 50 hours of Dragon Quest Builders 2. Mm. I feel like maybe I'm I'm done with it. I lo- I love the game, mm-hmm. but I feel like I feel like I've had my fill. Mm-hmm. Especially with the way that game is like kind of paced. 50 hours, you you're getting pretty close towards the end. Well, I'm in the middle of the castle island. Okay. Well, Brad, you're also probably like 900 hours into Slay the Spire, and you probably have nowhere near the end of it. It's but you would say that it's a pretty good game, right? It's, yeah, of course. No, I, I finished Slay the Spire many like, times. I can say I like, I genuinely like and 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 I like, I like I Ace that Combat game. Seven. Like, I mm-hmm. think that's a that's a damn good video game. Is it, the, is it a game that I would maybe say is going to be in my top ten list? I don't know. That, that's but a game you probably not. should finish. Yeah, you I probably should will. finish it. I probably will. But it's no, also you like, will. But I'm just saying, if I if I was to stop right now where I'm at, I wouldn't say I didn't like it. I liked it. I just didn't finish it. That's perfectly viable. But you're going to finish it. But I'm planning on finishing it, yeah. For sure. Just like I'm planning on finishing Sekiro. You should play Bloodstained. I will try. <laughs> um, all right. Thank you, Nolan, for the last minute question. Thank mm-hmm. you. Thank you, River. Is it River Plu- Plus A or River yes. Plus? Okay. River, River Plus, Plus A. A. Thank you so much River for your Plus patronage. Plus. We appreciate it. Um, again, guys, thank you for, for watching us live. Uh, join us again next Thursday night for another episode. We'll have plenty to talk about. It'll be a good show. Um, if you want, you can watch the stream games on 4pp.tv periodically, and you can join our Discord at discord.gg slash 4player. If you're interested in supporting us financially and you want to help us reach our next goal and do our next Project M, uh, you can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash 4player, and you can, of course, opt to subscribe to us on Twitch if you prefer. Uh, you can still ask questions and whatnot if you do that. So, But yes, everybody out there, most importantly, whether you're paid, a paid supporter or not, we appreciate you, and you're invited to join our Discord. So check that shit out if you haven't. We'd love to see you in there. Um, but anyways, thank you guys so much for listening. We will see you guys next week. Have a good night. Bye. Bye.